and gentlemen, you know what time it is. Look at the chats going off tonight. We have the one and only lead developer of Rogue Planet Games. Rel is here in the house. And we're looking forward to meet him in person. I hope you guys have a good time with me. I hope all of you in chat understand how much I love all of you. And thank you so much ahead of time for basically being family friendly, respectful, and positive. This is because all of you have actually been that way from my entry at January 8th until now. And I love all of you for maintaining that, have changed your lives and changed my life as well. And now we have an opportunity of a lifetime to sit down with one of the Rogue Planet developers live on stream. Let's go meet him. All right, we're gonna go ahead and switch it over. Look at these guys. I was trying to represent Rel, and so let's go ahead and basically see him right now. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it over. You all know that what that is, the switching. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and click it. God, I'm so freaking nervous. We're about to see Rel. Ah! Oh. <clears throat> Focus. He doesn't know what I'm seeing right now. Oh, here we go. Wow, my hands shaking. What if I just left before the stream? No, I just, like, that <laughs> terrible. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? I am doing okay. You are amazing. Okay Everybody today. has been talking about you in my circles. I love you so much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Honestly, man, my uh, I want to first off tell everybody that is currently watching. I, I would like to start off with this interview by thanking Rel and giving us this opportunity of a lifetime. I said it earlier in the stream, but I also it means a lot to me. And I bet everybody who's watching in chat feels the same way. Can I get everybody in chat? Just throw emotes. Just throw emotes all over the place right now, guys, and showcase how much <laughs> just, we freaking, just any emote. Oh. Just put it in there. Look at these guys putting some amazing text all over the place. There they are. The Carto love is in the house. That's the Carto emote. That's our under, uh, that's our other developer who is Twitch streaming as well. I'm sorry, I haven't even started the interview yet. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Thank you so much, guys. And um, Rel, how are you feeling, man? I'm I'm good. Dude, I'm good. hands down. This I first want to basically. Too much energy for me. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We can just just uh, just take <sighs> a step back. Here we go. <laughs> how are you doing, Rel? <laughs> Are you ready? I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and basically first thank one individual before me who actually interviewed you. And I, I basically want to let Mukas know how much I love him as well for starting all of this. Mukas has a video that is with Rel, and his quotes are, um, Rel interview, this game haunts me, Planetside 2, lead designer by Mukas. And so I'm going to share that YouTube link with all of you to know that there is another interview out there that you guys should pay attention to. Uh, Rel goes through some amazing topics, and Mukas is such a good freaking uh, interviewer. Thank you, man. I hope you re interview more individuals on your stream, and I love watching you every time, and that was great. Um, I also want to say uh, congratulations to you, Rel, and the entire Rogue Planet staff. In my opinion, it was very successful escalation update. I mean, it was incredible. We had 11,000 players connect at one point in time. Is that correct, Rel? I think I, think I might have gotten up to 13. I think it... Yeah, 13k peak. I'm so sorry, Rel. <laughs> you told me no energy. But my hand is literally shaking for how freaking nervous I am. We have gotten to 13,000 and Planet Side 2! I, think, I, <laughs> I don't care if it's I think. No, We're I just check. Somebody, somebody fact check me. This is a very important era we live in yes. now where you need to be fact checked nonstop. I apologize if it's not fact checked. <laughs> it's my fault for making it intense. It, it won't be my fault. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay with that but yeah the the uh reception has been overwhelming uh the update was i mean we're still like hot fixing issues but it is probably one of the smoothest releases especially for um for an update this big that we've had probably throughout the game's history so uh kind of cool and the team is doing an amazing job and uh we continue to move forward well done team well done you staff members huge heart goes out to you if you see carto tap in the back and say carto love you know that little image uh, and at the same time, Andy, man, well done, man. Oh, yeah. And yeah, Justin, everybody's great job. Out. I don't know the rest of your names, but I look forward to meeting <laughs> you one day. Six months from now, when all of this is over. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah. 
And so my question to you is also is, have you had an opportunity to see the steam reviews? We hit an all time high of 93% positive. Yeah. Have you had a chance to see that? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, that's ridiculous, but it that shows the, the power of the community, right? And, uh, and community figureheads like yourself and uh, Dr. Money Pants is very, uh, very helpful and kind of motivating that, that change. And the community was like super excited. Everybody was hyped. And, and that's, I, I think that people uh, don't quite realize how important those reviews are, but now they, they should, right? Like when you get very positive, that's when you get to the, the tops of the, uh, the uh, like the trending and the, we're, we're top uh, MMORPGs. Maybe that right is now? it. Is that it? Okay. He just said it again. We're going to quote him on that. Fast check. I'm just kidding. I know it's, <laughs> I know it's effective. Please, I've seen please. it myself on Steam. Yeah. It is the top rated no. game. I'm going to go ahead and show you live on this entire chart. It has changed right now, guys. The 30 days has passed. We're at 91%, but we should still be. No. I know. We went down by 2% because all of you start are over. so amazing. We're going to start over and do this again. Uh, Dr. Money Pants, uh, one second. Let me make sure. Uh, Dr. Money Pants, when you get a chance, uh, come to my office. We're going to basically talk about the next strategy to bring it up to 95%. Thank you. Uh, just make sure he's going to come to my office in just a minute here. Uh, sorry about that, doctor. Give me a second. Um, I'm getting another uh, message real quick in my ear. Okay. That makes total sense. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and switch the screen and uh, we're going to show you the actual percentage now. And you can see it's still overwhelmingly positive. At least we have a record of it on the stream. And I hope I'm doing a good job of switching that. Fantastic. You're noticing that I am not even here because somebody messaged me. Thank you. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Uh, and you're noticing right here, guys, 91% right now. If you guys are all watching and your team who's got new members, feel free to let them know if they enjoyed this game for more than one minute. I'm just kidding. For 30 days, tell them to go post a recommended review. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. It's going to make your game great. And you saw the results. You're noticing right here, this guy. He's right here. He's actually with us. Sorry, he's actually hearing me, isn't he? Okay. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and uh, switch it back. Uh, so sorry, guys. We're just. I'm just excited. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna go. A little bit uncomfortable. Don't want a victory lap too much because, like, the the work uh, moving forward is probably gonna be the most challenging. Uh, putting out big updates like that, you know, it's it's nice to be able to have a have a certain length of time that you can kind of just you know be in the background and and just do work and uh, off of this. This concept that you have and then release to the world and i think a lot of the stuff there was kind of it was surprising in uh not only like the stuff that we were doing but also that it was like pretty close to being done we pushed it to pts the same day as the uh what was it the same day as the live stream or like maybe shortly afterwards and that that's like that's really good because the community can actually see that you're you're making the things that you're talking about so yeah moving forward we just need to kind of keep up the momentum that's that's gonna be the real challenge. That's the hard work. Man, well done, man. Well said. Well said. Hands down. Um, I want to let you guys all know a couple of ground rules. So I'm gonna shift my focus into something more serious for all of you guys who are watching, not for Rel, but you guys are watching. This is my first interview. I'm a bit nervous, so I needed to think in the last 24 hours, the 48 hours, how can I get an interview so my interviewees can feel comfortable in such a way where they do not have to answer all my questions. They do not have to feel uncomfortable on my stream. So I thought of a method that can give them all of an opportunity to pass. Now, passing doesn't mean that they're weak, that they're not intelligent, that they, that they don't know the question. Passing could mean many different things. It means it has NDA agreement. It's too personal. Um, they don't want to basically disclose more information on it because they haven't gone through the hoops to understand the actual complications that can occur when they actually said it. So let's keep it simple, guys. Everybody, I made this rule, and I hope you guys understand. If he does use the word pass, I'm going to fully respect him. I'm not going to ask why, because now he has an opportunity to go back, figure out if the question is actually something he can actually rephrase and post on his own time and work with his team. Because he's a one-man army right here, guys, and he has a team of 30 that he can go through, and he's going to make sure all of that info is correct before he actually has a chance. As you can see earlier, he's talking about fact-checking. You see that this man is far more intelligent than I am. And so thank you, Rel, for giving me an opportunity again. And so we're going to ask him a question that is now on the personal level. Now that you guys all know about the past rule. Um, I would love to know the history behind the name Rel and where it came from. And was this an in-game name or a nickname? Because I know there's a YouTube fandom somewhere. Is it okay if I show that to everybody as we talk about it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, go for awesome. it. All right, so, so the, uh, 
the you know i it kind of just uh it just came about like i like the the letter w and i like the letter r just the way that it sounds it's kind of i don't know if that's uh if that sounds weird or whatever but uh yeah it was just short sweet it made sense so one of the things guys i want you to know is that youtube fandom these guys are people thank you so this much for the website. call skippy this website is amazing. <laughs> it's got personal information on this rel, and he has this entire motion right here. Hey there, rel here. That's his signature intro that I just took from rel. You guys are no longer gonna hear that from him. It's mine. You heard that rel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, and so, guys, this is amazing because not only is it up to date for how much you guys love your team, I had a chance to actually understand a bit better, uh, a bit better about rel understanding all of his achievements throughout the day. I mean, you can see here, he's basically been uh, a recent interview has already been posted already on here. I don't know who's keeping up to date on that, but well done guys yeah. for getting all of your legends on here. So we all can know them, you know, throughout history. So if anybody doesn't know anything so, about uh, Rel, go check it out. And that's, that's just really some, weird. That is literally all your fans, by the way, Rel. That's what I'm trying to tell you, man. You that's, guys that's in Rogue really Planet weird. Games are our <laughs> heroes. You guys are our fans. You guys, I mean, sorry. You are like our legends in our community, man. And I appreciate you, whatever you've done since I got here. I've heard about all the achievements. I've seen your YouTube content and you're, in my opinion, really smart. So I hope basically I don't overwhelm you because my energy is equivalent to an energy vampire. I suck the, f sorry, I messed that word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> 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 all right, let's move on. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Can you cut that for me? Okay. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go ahead and try to uh, moving on. So, uh, so you guys got a chance to see that is the Rel fandom location. So if you guys want to learn more about Rel, it's all there. Ask their questions away to that fandom. They will work together with you. Uh, all right. Now we're going to go to the next question and we're going to go and talk about that green bandana. That green bandana. How did it come about? I saw a tweet the other day, which was like, I think two or three days ago with you running a marathon like 10 years ago. You might if I just give me uh, more yeah, intel about not, that. Not a marathon. Just, just to be oh, clear. Oh, so, uh, sorry. this was, this was back in the Navy. Uh, we, Every week we had fun runs, like fun runs. It's uh, for the most part, I think it was uh, it was kind of mandated, a uh, mandatory fun. But um, people from each each department would just come out and just try to uh, help maintain their fitness, and they would theme it around all the different holidays. So that was St. Patty's Day, and uh, I just wore whatever green I had. It was like a hot topic uh, silk <laughs> tie, and then uh, that is awesome. And a uh, yeah, green bandana. That's that's whatever. Dude, and then you I represented well. The... <laughs> Instantly, like anybody in yeah. that crowd, you're like literally like I'm here. You guys cued me. I'm actually my name is showing. Um and uh yeah, you basically. Get... I, I used to I used to wear bandanas a lot. Um back when, well in in the high school era, but uh, yeah, I didn't get too many chances in the navy. So <laughs> no, no worries. Hopefully, one of these days when we get a chance to have Planicide to bring out some merch. Uh, and we can work with them uh, around you, of course. We're going to get some bandanas with the realm theme on it and all that fan some fancy schmancy stuff so you can get a percentage of that cut. Uh, it would be amazing to see how many people are running around with a realm bandana. I could see it right now, just like a straight, straight up decal on the side of their head. They can probably right now go and like, just, like put an ingrain little tattoo here if they want. Actually, don't do that. Please don't do that. Cut that out again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But uh, that is awesome, guys. I just sent you the link again, guys, in chat. Thank you guys for being so freaking cool in chat. I've been paying attention a little bit here and there on the chat. It is going off the hook. Um, so thanks, guys, for being so cool, super cool. I have another question for you guys. It's a little serious because I think it's... My God. I, I think it's a, a little uh, important to bring this up because I want to know more about this topic before we start going to all the outfits and all the content creators who have asked questions. Uh, thank you so much for the follow, uh, Mega. For that man i appreciate it let's go and move this chat down to here all right so this is uh how intense is it right now at rogue planet games since the reddit post of the coronavirus has started is that the full question yeah, i'm gonna basically bring up the uh, google post right now it's not showing okay. up this is not fair uh okay so yeah the full question is right now that the coronavirus is basically affecting all of orange county it's in california guys um, they have set a mandate stop for all work businesses in the area. And that means that if it's not a restaurant, if it's not something that you have to physically see each other, that mandate might go out uh, to their studio very soon. And so that's in um, San Diego. And so I don't know when they're going to get that mandate, but we saw a message from Andy. I'm going to go ahead and share that with everyone here. Here is that message, guys. And we're going to switch the screen again 
to show you guys personally the message from Andy. So that means they're going to uh, continue working on the game and the productivity level is going to go down. And the reason why productivity is going to go down, I'm going to assume this, uh, Rel, I need you to clarify when I get finished, is the hands-on eye contact on the screen is incredible feedback at time in a timely manner. Now these guys have a chance just to one-on-one -on -one, uh, FaceTime. Then they have to click, show their screen, and then they can't physically point where they want that individual to do specific activities. This is the dumbed-down version of it. I'm going to let Rel fill you in on the rest of that. Um, Rel, do you see where I'm going with the question? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would kind of be surprised if our if our productivity didn't suffer just by virtue of like, it is nice to have everybody in the office and it is nice to be able to just like look over your shoulder and like talk to the guy next to you about, you know, a question that you have, because that's, that's quick, you know, and you get results instantly. But uh, when you're kind of uh, disconnected, which right now um, we have, uh, the company's been uh, fairly proactive at give, getting everybody like set up with their uh, work from home, like rigs or, you know, VPN access and all that sort of thing so that we can all kind of stay safe uh, and and uh, work remotely. And I think that the this style of work that we do is um, it's, it's conducive to that. But I, again, I would be surprised if productivity didn't suffer. Um, we're still kind of coming up with uh, ways to, uh, to work best, like between us, just to make sure that everybody stays in constant communication and, um, and that we, we all kind of just know what step uh, everybody is in the, the process of what they're working on and if there's any hangups and that sort of thing. So it's, uh, I, I think there's going to be a little bit of a, a learning curve. Um, this is certainly my, I shouldn't say my, my first time working from home, but I think it'll be my first time um, with an entire team that's working from home. Usually I have some, some pretty uh, uh, good access to, um, to just all, all the team members. So uh, yeah, it, it'll be different. But um, I think Bungie actually put out an article because uh, they transitioned to uh, work from home uh, a while ago since they're, wow. they're up in Seattle. And um, do you know what the message they, said or now? Is somebody still into what uh, Andy said? It's pretty long. Um, wow. But they're talking about like they're trying to promote that as a as a practice and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's it's worth looking it up. Not yeah. not now, but uh, I don't know. having but having yeah. companies be proactive for this sort of thing is it's kind of. It's, it's extremely really important, important, man, guys. This, yeah. this, this is, um, I had a video earlier. I'm not advertising myself. Obviously, I'm on my own stream. Feel free to watch it at your own time. I produced as much info as I can in a clear and concise way for you guys to know about the coronavirus in my eyes of what the CDC has offered me. So if you guys want any information, there is a link above. Uh, you can go to the videos tab, and it'll say, um, let's talk about the coronavirus. It's a little sensitive su subject. And I went over all those details for you guys. So I hope you guys can watch that and learn everything you can on how to stay safe because I truly would love to see you guys in the community and not to be depressed because the people around you have lost loved ones. I'm not talking about you guys. You guys will be fine if you guys don't have those pre-existing conditions that were labeled above on the CDC. And so it's a tough, tough, it's a tough subject to go through. And I know we're all going to have a hard time, but I'm going to be here with you guys. Uh, you can DM me anytime. Uh, I'm doing this full time. And so I want to let you guys know I, I truly care and I'll do what I can as one single human being is one human basically is possible. So thanks guys for being patient, give me a chance to, you know, do what I can to support you and being patient, being, give me a chance to DM you back because I have so many voice conversations now since this interview, I haven't been able to keep up with my DMs and this has been the first time for me. So I apologize everybody if it took me a couple hours to get back to you. All right. Thank you, Ralph, for that answer. We're going to go ahead and start moving into content creator questions and the outfit questions. And I'm going to introduce them a little bit more uniquely. All of you know this voice. We're going to start off with Mofker. He's a content creator for Planetside 2 for the last six years. This is his Twitch channel. I want to make sure that I have offered all of you to understand these individuals. That's his Twitch channel. And his question begins. Rel. You come a long, long way, going from being a content creator for the game to the very lead designer. You stayed with the, you stayed with the game through all the hard time, hard and difficult times. You came into work on weekends, spent your own free time working on the game we all love, no matter how grim the future may have looked at that time. It is very inspiring. It is a very inspiring story, and I just want to ask you, what kept you pushing forward? What kept you motivated? 
and your driving force against all odds. So I think it's a it's kind of a multi-part answer here. So first off, I, I love Final Set 2 and, and have uh, since it was launched. And he said it. He loves Planicide <laughs> too. Yes, give it up to him. You can't just surprise me like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know that, that's that's a big part of it. Um, I I really enjoy Planicide too. I feel like it has a lot of uh, untapped potential. I mean, we are for the most part uncontested in the the genre. So it's yeah. It, I think uh, as a like community member, and I'm sure many other people watching kind of have this um, this feeling that uh, the game could be something more and that's kind of what's just been pushing me along but then also my my personal motivation of um i've always wanted to, to create games like i've i've i have notebooks and notebooks of uh of unrealized game designs uh sitting in a uh, in a drawer somewhere uh and it's kind of i think every step that i've planned out has taken me closer and closer to uh to being able to to make a game my own someday that's awesome and while, yeah i feel like lead designers it's getting there, but it's, it's not close enough. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Wait a second. There's a little bit more that he wants. Let's figure that out. What is the next <laughs> level that you want? Are we looking at Andy? Are we actually throwing daggers at him right now? Uh, no, Are we no, looking I, at CEO? I, I don't want Andy's job. I'm just kidding. <laughs> not joking. at all. I'm totally joking. Andy, you know uh, I'm looking at you right now. I'm just like, no, no, serious, seriously. Uh, Andy has a, a very, very difficult job. I There's know. A lot, of, a lot of respect that goes that way. Can you, can, you, um, can you elaborate on that so people know what that job and title is? Uh, I would do him a disservice if I tried to describe it. Never mind. He has to handle so much stuff. It's it's unbelievable. Andy, um, we're looking at you. Fun. Looking for the I'm next interview to know what you do for us. We want <laughs> to know what you eat. Why do you sleep? I'm just kidding. That's kind of creepy. Uh, um, so, uh, <laughs> Rel, uh, now that we're on the topic about the idea of lead designer, can I know mm -hmm. a little bit about what you do day to day uh, in a... Uh, in such a way to where it helps the community as a whole know how you basically just like a rough intro of hey I come in the uh, come into daybreak and I first thing I do is I basically flick off everyone that's in the office <laughs> and I tell this person you know you how did you, you little <laughs> and I'm gonna how'd you know I'm this just kidding I'm like... just kidding uh just no, an no, example no, 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 of yeah <laughs> <Semi -accurate. laughs> and then and then the, uh, what I saw I'm gonna tell you what I saw and I'd love to know more about that I got a chance to come into uh, Daybreak Games personally, and I sat down with my uh, my partner, uh, a COO. When I say partner, I'm talking about like tag team, like Jesus Christ, what am I talking about? He is my best friend from basically uh, high school, and I, uh, I, I can't say enough how much he supported me in every single way. And so thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. And um, I'm going to throw it out there. I'm, I'm looking for my wife one day, so just want to throw it out there because I just said the word partner, and I'm going to probably get caught for that. <laughs> uh, and so... Um, sorry about that, man. I apologize, Patrick. Uh, so la long story short, we basically showed up to Daybreak Games, and when we showed up, we were greeted by Justin. There is an Instagram entire intro to this, guys, and so there's all the photos for you, and there is an entire YouTube series of what we've done. And so, I mean, not YouTube, Jesus Christ, Arshik, you can do better than this. Uh, here is the Arshik TV dis uh, uh, Instagram. Check out the photos of Rel and the entire staff, and we're cheersing them. We're saying thank you to Rogue Planet Games. Those were you guys, and those were the champagne glasses from you guys in the PS2 community. And Commander Series also basically offers some support with the hamster feed and the uh, gift cards that we basically both split and gave to all of them as well. And so you'll see Andy did, uh, and tweet towards us, and it was very, very cool that they were able to take that generous, um, not generous, sorry, uh, that, uh, that gift from us. And so... Thank you guys for not, you know, saying you can't drink on the sta on the sta on, oh, on yeah. the job. No, no, that, that was super cool. Yeah, awesome. no, we we really appreciate that. Awesome. Thank don't you, man. I was nervous about that. I didn't know if you, I guess, if you could yeah, do no, it or cool. not. I was like, I don't know much about them. Oh my god. <laughs> you get it. Um, thank you guys. And so there's the Instagram guys. Check out the pictures. You'll see who Andy is. You'll see who Justin is, and you'll see how ripped he is. Uh, and you'll see Carto. Take off the jacket. I'm just kidding. Uh, the jacket's fantastic. Um. And let's go on next question. Thank you so much for answering Mofker's question. Mofker, thank you so much. He's a Twitch streamer. Get a chance to go see him. Fo like him. Follow him. Check out his content. This guy's got a lot of energy, and he's freaking... We love him to death, guys. Uh, make sure you guys love your content creators, because they're the ones that advertise for this damn game. Don't be, you know... Okay. Uh, so let's go next person. I'm going to introduce him again. Commander Sirius is next! I used to call him Cyrus, but I corrected myself! Woo! Uh... 
He's been a content creator for two thousand uh, for uh, for Play on Side Two for six years. His website is cmdrserious.com. We're gonna go ahead and showcase that right now on uh, on the chat. And his question, Rel, do you like being on the com uh, community slash content creation side or the development side of the gaming uh, industry more, or would you like to have been done both? Uh, the I, I like to make games. I want to make games. That's that's really uh that's kind of got me here is just that desire. And, and when did that desire begin? Oh, was when it I was like a kid. five years old, one years like, old. Like yeah, was it your yeah. father? No, was it was... something like your best no, friend made a let's... game and you're just looking at him like you give me that ability? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't really have a good uh, like I, I can't pinpoint a, a good spot in my life. There wasn't like suddenly a realization. I was just like ah. Oh. I need to make games, you know. Oh, it's, uh, I mean that <clears throat> makes <yeah>. sense. <laughs> no, I mean it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, so, I've just been doing it for as long as I can remember. So uh, my question is, um, when you had the opportunity to start the YouTube, uh, and that began, was your intention of YouTube to one day uh, use that as a resume? Because that's basically one of the simple simple techniques now in 2020 that I'm doing. That's the reason why I'm doing Twitch because I don't want to mm -hmm. go through the acting route and have to go through that climbing journey and being away from my family for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I, I've done Twitch because it's given me this opportunity of a lifetime. And I got this guy over here. High five, high five. Okay, sorry. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, we're doing it! We're doing it! <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome! Yes, look at that, guys. I love Rel. Okay, sorry. Um, Man of Series, you're awesome. Uh, thank you so much for that question. I had to make sure I bring the energy down so that way I don't make him run away. Uh... Wilhelm Caster is going to be next, guys. Wilhelm Caster of the 666. The Devil Dogs on Connery US West. Faction, the new conglomerate. This is a combo question with Faber 1. Content creator since 2018 for Planetside 2. We're going to go ahead and showcase both their questions at once because it's very similar. There's the YouTube link for Faber 1. Please stop by and give him a like and subscribe because this man does a ton of work for you. Please like the damn videos he's watched for Planet Side 2. It helps with advertisement. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, if you do like your game, if you don't like your game, don't, 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 don't hit it. He's got a cool aesthetic too. Yes. I like their one stuff. I know, right? He's style. like the best yeah. dressed man of Planet Side 2 <laughs> exactly. in 2020. And I saw yeah. him not wear one of the, the outfits with the suspenders, man. I was so angry mm -hmm. with him. I was like, you little, <laughs> I was like, you do that again, favorite one. I will challenge you and take the spotlight. Just kidding. Favor one, you're basically good. well done, well dressed. Uh, and also, I like your job pockets. Here's a question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. There seems to be a focus on reinforcing uh, an MMO's aspect to PS2. Uh, what is planned as the next phase of improvement into Planet Side 2? And will we see a continuation of the lore? And we'll have a deeper understanding of why we're fighting on Araxis, Sanctuary, Beyond, and why. Hold on, I have one more question. Uh, and this is from, that was from Wilhelm Caster 666 Group. And here's the other one from Favor 1. Planet Side has been around for a long time now. And during that time, quite has, some more has been written regarding the war on Araxis. We have had more story-driven events in the past. EverQuest Anniversary, for example. Are we going to get anything similar in the future to introduce some more players to this interesting background story uh, of why we're actually fighting? So they're very similar. Uh, lore, your question. I mean, your answer. Yeah, yeah. So uh, lore, yes. You'll certainly see more. I think we're going to try to interlace it uh, into everything that we, everything that we do. <laughs> and, uh, I got too excited. I was about to start. I was like, no, stop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and there's actually going to be some... Uh, some systems or at least one system that is kind of uh that, that takes it and kind of runs with it um i'm not going to speak on that yet but yeah no there's there an important part um I, I think it's been kind of neglected in planet side too and, and people uh will cut quite frequently they'll say like and you know why focus on lore when you know the, it, this is a first person shooter and whatever whatever but it's it's not something that i i think necessarily that you need to focus on i think it's something that you help uh surround the the game with like it kind of it just helps raise the immersion level. Can I, uh, uh, can I finish that statement on that part? Yeah, yeah. I want you guys to understand what lore means to me and what it can do after, of course, everything has been patched up and looking more beautiful, you know what I'm talking about, uh, when they polish everything else. The reason why lore is like 
at the level of legendary, if it's done right, is it not only gives you an opportunity to bring energy in, like what Radlock did, it, Radlock did in that Connery video. I literally almost teared inside feeling his words was super powerful. That's and good I'm, stuff. It was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, um, you know what? Yeah, we can't do that. Uh, you guys know the video. Uh, please go watch it. It's on YouTube. And that's the kind of lore we're talking about, where you can actually showcase the Planetside 2 game uh, similar to the very uh, introduction, but the introduction of the game that we saw in that Planetside 2 uh, trailer was ep epic and gunfighting, but it doesn't explain anything about who the freaking people are getting shot at. The coolest part was the VS showing up at the end and just completely pushing everything at the end. But the point I'm trying to make, guys, lore is very important. Why? Because it gives people the reason to try hard for their faction, to put on the colors, to represent each color that you're out there. You know who you are. I'm going to bring it up right now. You guys know who you are, the Terran Republic, the new conglomerate, and the Vanu Sovereignty. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, lore is important. It's not basically priority. He did say it. It's in the mix. Is that correct, Lamrell? Oh uh, Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank it, you so much. It, let me let me uh, get one oh. more bit, though. Like, get in there. So when you think about the, the benefits of lore, right? Yeah. How many memes do we have right now about uh, VS and their spandex, about uh, you know, NC and their team killing? Like a lot of that stuff, or, or just like NC and and anything dysfunctional at any given time. It's yeah. like that sort of stuff is kind of uh, it's because lore exists. And while I, I think that you know players don't necessarily like if you're interested in the shooting aspect, you just want to shoot people. Maybe you you're picking them because of their guns or whatever. But also that's driven by lore too. Yeah. So it's. It, it all matters in, in little ways that you don't necessarily uh, uh, appreciate, but they're always there. You're right. You're right. And so I have some uh, some pieces here, guys. If you guys know who Dim Giant is on Connery NC with Liver Raccoon, she makes some extremely funny cartoons, guys. Uh, I don't know if they're cartoons, anime. God, I'm probably butchering your work. I'm so sorry. Um, but... Uh, at the same time, Dim Giant's also got a great sense of humor. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of uh, those individuals basically producing more content, memes, and everything I like. And their entire team actually has those contents constantly being pushed out. And so that's the stuff we want to see more from you guys. And we want to showcase that because I truly enjoy seeing that behavior, especially that sticky grenade that hits the target. You start running, it's like delaying and basically blows up everyone around you. That was a freaking hilarious comic. Well done, by the way. And I would love to see more. Um, let's go ahead and move down. Thank you so much, 666, and favor one for your question. Uh, Wilhelm Caster is the one that submitted that question. Well done, buddy. Uh, and uh, good to see you again. Uh, and thanks, everyone, 66 for being here and representing him. Look at you guys in chat. You guys are freaking awesome. All right, next question. We've got Sad Trumpet, boy. This guy represents ABYS, the Abyss, on Genudine, PlayStation 4, US West, representing the Vaughn of Sovereignty. Here's a question for Rel. Does Planetside 4, does PlayStation 4, I'm so sorry, we're cray cracking. Confirmed. Confirmed. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, does play, PlayStation 4 version of Planetside 2 have its own dedicated development team at Rogue Planet Games? And when creating new updates, what are the speed bumps that are uh, come with porting it over to Planetside, the PlayStation 4? I really suck at this. It's Continue. so uh, those, it's a good question. Uh, PS4 certainly receives less attention than PC, you know, um, and a lot of that does have to do with the limitations of the hardware is the first uh, hurdle that we have to get over. Like, so when we think about construction system or when we think about even war assets or even adding another texture sheet to the game, like there's, there are memory issues, um, for example, on the, on the PS4 where we are really hesitant to add new things to the game. Uh, and it's, it's something that, um, like technology will outpace at some point, but right now we're having to find, uh, or trying to find solutions and coming up with the tech to to address those problems isn't, um, it's it's not like, it's not easy. Uh, and it's not it's not quick. So we have to figure out when uh, and what to invest the time into. And uh, and then there's there's other hurdles too, like the, the UI for the PS4, completely different than the PC. Uh, it was it was like done from scratch, and uh, so you had to double our work on the same feature uh, just to get it to PS4. Uh, and then let's see the uh, the approval process is I, I think it's 
it's less an issue than it used to be, but that that held us up for a long time. Uh, just the the ability to uh, submit updates um, to PS4. And uh, yeah, so as far as there being an actual dev team, no, no, we uh, we're all the same team, and we are beginning talks right now with how to approach PS4 um, development and what we 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 can try to get there. That's but it, awesome. again, it's it's talks. Like we we need to know um, how much work um, those those sorts of features will take to port over, and and I mean whether or not it makes sense to do that. Like, does PS4 have to be in parity with PC? Like, that would be the ideal, I think. Is but is it like is it necessary? You can know? I uh, throw in a question to make sure we confirm what is going on, so that way I can, I guess I'm going to quote unquote, basically try to clarify it deeper till I understand it better. Um, mm-hmm. PS4, uh, the hardware in there is that the hardware of the PS4? Imagine if we had PS5. Would it be easier for you guys to port all the updates on the PS5 because of the actual new hardware inside the PS4? Or we're talking about hardware somewhere else. I'm just trying to make sure what that means. No, no, no. It's, it's hardware on the PS4. So Thank like you. PS4 Pro definitely operates better than uh, the PS4 current. You heard him, guys. I, I think players who are on that, they can totally feel the difference. Uh, as far as PlayStation 5, I don't want to speak for that because... We don't know yet. <laughs> we don't do yeah. that. Yeah. I'm just making sure. Like yeah. PS5 is going to be better. We just don't know right. if it's good enough for... Planetside 2! That's what we're looking at. Planetside 2 is incredibly difficult, guys, to maintain because it has 1,200 living, breathing, I'm not really cussing, but you get the idea, um, living, breathing players. And so it's very, very hard to manage ping, to manage the players on a, on a hardware to be successful at the level that they're describing. So they have to reduce the graphics. Is that correct? That's... Uh, one of the reasons I think it's uh, I, I shouldn't say that. No. Ping, ping. Yeah, the the latency stuff. I, I think that's that's all more or less taken care of. It's mostly just uh, performance when it comes to frame rate. Awesome. Uh, and and so... that's that's impacted a lot by like uh, just all of the stuff that's in the game. You know, and just how many characters or actors you can have on the screen at any given time. Yeah, all of that is is very contingent on on the hardware. Awesome. And if, uh, if I have anybody here that is currently watching the stream from Rogue Planet Games, can I get them to tweet out that Planet I mean, Jesus, uh, PS4 will get attention soon. And I had basically a good group of people that messaged me that want to know that, hey, you saw it from RHEL. They're going to tweet it basically in the future. They're saying, we are going to give it attention. We just don't have a date for it. So that way they see it. They don't have to basically do 20 or 30 messages on the forums or Reddit. And so thank you, thank you guys for trusting me to give you that question out there. And Sad Trumpet Boy, thank you so much for the submission. And um, I hope I answered all your questions on that point, guys. And can you tell me one last thing? Who are the ones that actually touch PS4? Are you also involved? Um, yeah. So at this point, it's mostly the stuff that we design is built in such a way that we don't have to touch it directly from the design side. Like that's like the gunplay is is all the same outside of the the auto aim or the uh, the aim assist rather yeah. auto aim. Same way. Um, Are we bringing cameras yeah. back? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> all those, all those, right, right, right. Uh, and, and the uh, the biggest part is just the uh, it's the UI, and then the the code base is more or less kept in parity nowadays. So I don't think that um, that there are, are huge issues there. So a lot of it comes down to UI, and then the all or the restrictions of the platform itself. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I see some people trying to post links. I just want to let you guys know that it was done when I first started on Twitch. I had someone basically post some not safe for work links to people and uh, was caught by my family. And uh, I no longer want links to show up from anybody else because I embarrassed myself in front of my family because those links were actually provided on the chat. So thanks guys basically for respecting the fact that there's no links available to post. So if you guys want me to actually give a link out, uh, feel free to... um very difficult to basically get those links out. So if you guys want to do those links, please hop into Discord and use the general PS2 section to post links and let everyone in this Discord hop in there and have conversations. Go to the streaming live channel, join Wilhelm Caster, join the rest of your team over there and actually talk about what we're talking about. Thank you so much for the follow, guys. I appreciate it. And I hope I answered your question. Sad trumpet boy, heart goes out to you, man, and your team, man. I hope you guys will have a beautiful game coming out to you guys in the near future and it is a fun one and i know you guys are having a great time just want more and i agree more will come soon let's go get the next one thank you guys so much for the follow you guys are freaking amazing um here's the next one ladies and gentlemen i'm looking forward to introduce this man 
When I first started streaming, this guy introduced me to some players that I was looking forward to finding. Slatter 1. Outfit. DPSO. Dropping purple smoke. If you ever drop orange smoke or green, I'm coming after you. You look... Just kidding. Uh, Server Connery? Faction. Vanu Sovereignty. This is a co-question with another player submitted by Lewd. His outfit. Somehow he's got three of them. He's representing Fui, Gobs, and Fiji. They were stand for Goblin Tribe, Jumpers, and Juice. God, you've got lots of juice over there. They represent all three factions, the TR, the NC, and the VS simultaneously. Their question will be deep down in this subject. We're going to go di deep into depth about the Outfit Wars to make sure I clarify every step of the way because I had too many questions about it, and we're just going to make sure you all are on board with this. This is a question about Alpha Wars. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the link that has all the details about times, about everything you need to know. So if you don't take that link now and you want to find it in chat, it will be very hard. Take the link now, hold it on the side. Ladies and gentlemen, Alpha Wars has gone through extensive pre-alpha playtesting thanks to the PS2 community leaders and volunteers. That means you guys, and I'm going to make sure you know who you are. You guys in the Planicide 2 community have helped the leadership of RPG without signing an NDA agreement. You know who you are. Represent it in chat. Put up some freaking emojis. You guys are epic. You guys didn't say a single word. You kept it so respectful amongst the two of us. To show that we will not give away that intel about Bastion fleet carriers and war assets, and you guys kept helping the RPG staff for free on your own time to get the game of the lifetime to come out. And this update was honestly, was a great contribution. Thanks to you guys and the PS2 community. And you know how much I freaking love you guys. Well done. And so it we're going to continue talking about it. It is insane that it is insane that they did not spill the beans. Like, I, I can't believe it. I have very, I think, I, th I think I have like a lower than average, uh, uh, faith in humanity. Um, You're going to basically be best friends <laughs> with all of us soon, buddy. We're going to hug the living right. out of you, buddy. Sorry. But this was like, like you know, maybe I should uh, reevaluate my perceptions. <laughs> it's just the ability to uh, to keep keep the mouth shut. Wow. Like, uh, no no repercussions, you know, no punishment, anything like that. It was good. It was really good stuff. You guys heard him. Just say it live. <laughs> I was preaching about this. All of you being positive, being respectful, and of course, family friendly in my channel. I love you. Ah, you know that. Okay, sorry, sorry, I'm too excited. Uh, Ralph, thank you so much for telling everybody that. It's extremely important for people to know what you guys have to have to, have to go through and what you guys have in your little uh, pillbox of work because you guys don't have the opportunity to reach out to the community because time is not available to you guys. And I know I'm taking too much of your time right now for this interview, but it's extremely important to the community that I've actually reached out to. And you guys are freaking amazing. Thank you so much, Ralph, for basically giving us this opportunity. I know your time is precious. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, so anyways, he's basically says after there, the, uh, thanks to the PS2 community leaders and volunteers, but we fully intend to continue tuning, balancing, and iterating based off community feedback during this initial preseason. And what I want to ask right here, is Alpha 1 enlistment phase that starts in March 13th. Mm -hmm. This is where all of you Alphas that want to be a part of Alpha Wars have to sign up in your Alpha browser. You click it, and then you're signed up, and you're ready to start on the 23rd. Is that correct? Uh, is it the 23rd? Yep, I have the, t I have the data right yeah. here. Uh, it says yes. qualification phase. It starts on Monday the 23rd. I'm not going to say the time because there's too many damn timestamps. Please use right. the website. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's important to know too is that all of these timestamps are local to your server. Yep. So, so we we try to uh, set it up in such a way that the uh, the outfit war is going to happen like around uh, prime time for your server, so that yep. like you are going to be online and you are going to you know have a better chance at, uh, at playing. Also, we have uh, an absurd amount of of outfits per server right now that are signed up for outfit wars. So awesome. Uh, it's it's good. My question now is, uh, there's going to be a couple questions here. First question, mm -hmm. as not enlisted in my, uh, my document, is do you still take right now feedback um, from the community and people like myself uh, to 
maybe uh, adjust what's going to happen um, the alpha one qualification phase or any other phases or are you saying hey guys we've done all of our work like basically i'm gonna let you guys all know what's happening there have been alpha wars have gone through extensive pre-alpha play testing thanks to the ps2 community leaders and volunteers understand what i'm saying guys those people put in a lot of work behind the scenes to keep it quiet to not ruin the reputation and they've already worked with this man right here and their team so they made this document this plan this entire formation of work and that's what they came up with i know all of you guys are many developers super intelligent individuals out there that have amazing questions to ask him and we're about to go into a start start those questions in just a minute so the question again was to you is alpha one alpha wars is it still possible to actually give you suggestions about it uh the i mean the easiest way to answer that is no but okay. uh that's the the reason for it is that we have very specific uh goals with how we want to or how we're tracking player behavior uh, and we want to know which values that we need to tune um, prior to going into that. So that the counts things for like, um, right now the qualification phase, which is like there's a start and end, and then it's gonna be a mad rush. That's two weeks right now. We anticipate that two weeks is kind of too long for most people. So to be just grinding all day, every day. So for these, these really big outfits that are gonna have players who are there um, available at all times of, of day, uh, we want to see uh, their wherewithal, like their ability to to maintain this sort of behavior and whether or not it negatively impacts the game. So when you have, um, right now there's talk of like ghost capping and, and that sort of thing. But you know what? When everybody's trying to ghost cap, guess what it does? It creates fights. Like that's what we're seeing right now. There's a lot of movement around the map. There's a lot of uh, fights on, on off continents. I mean, granted, the uh, populations are so high, it's hard to tell what an off continent is right now. But... Uh, all these sorts of behaviors, we, we also know that they are very driven with the... <laughs> I'm telling people not to type. Okay, listen, guys, it. listen to REL right now. It's uh, incredible information. Sorry, I can continue. So we, uh, yeah, so uh, we're also, we also know that the, the honeymoon phase, uh, when people are so, you know, excited or, or whatever, isn't necessarily the, the kind of behavior that's going to persist. So having these sort of long, longer drawn out um, time periods makes sense for us to to gauge that behavior and see it over time. Uh, and then all the feedback is going to come out. Like, is it going to say, you know, that the time periods are too long or that, uh, you know, the, the scoring is unfair. I mean, some of that stuff already exists. And the, the way that we have structured things, it's intentional. So uh, if you don't get a chance to play in the first outfit war, like, that's, that's kind of the point. Uh, it is very catered toward larger outfits right now. Uh, that's he not said it! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he just said it! I told you all that there was reasons behind it, and you guys heard him. Continue. So the, the cool thing, though, is that these players, uh, the reason that those complaints are coming up is because they want to, you know, participate in the Valfa Wars, right? Like, it's very important to them. So we need to find a way to, uh, to kind of balance things out a little bit. Right now, it is straight up large outfits can can totally take the cake uh, for like base control and for the amount of bases that they can control uh, and that sort of thing. And we want to be able to make that uh, even, or we want to even the playing field a little bit. Jesus, Archie. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I mute myself. Continue. As, <laughs> as we as we move forward. So, th But that's going to be in place for cycle two. So we, we really want to see how it shakes out right now. Um, and I ask everyone to just uh, be patient. There is a method to our madness, and uh, the impatience of players is not going to uh, outweigh our, uh, our diligence when it comes to actually, actually making change. I'm understanding there's a lot of energy in the room right now. I can feel it personally. I know a lot of you guys have these questions, and I'm looking forward to asking him. He just sent a lot of data for you. I hope you guys go back and rewatch this. And I'm still going to ask the questions from Cider One and Lude, who's asked, don't worry, guys. They asked some amazing questions. Thank you so much. Did Ralph I Perry. answer a bunch of the questions that you they did. already you asked? Did. Oh, okay. But Sorry, gonna, sorry. Let's pretend but, I didn't. Yeah, no, but we're going to go in and ask those questions personally so they know I use the words and you can actually phrase it per question. But you did amazing, Ralph. Thank you so much. Because <laughs> everyone told so me, much. everyone okay. told me to uh, up. Uh, 
I can't, I, I can't do this <laughs> right. Go. But that's the point. Let's go. All right. So, uh, qualification phase. You guys heard him. It's 24 hours. Starts on Monday. Again, here. Monday, on uh, March 23rd. Uh, on only no, the time. Hours, two weeks. Qualification phase is two weeks. I oh, know. 24 hours for okay. two weeks straight. Yeah, so I'm going to let you know. It. It's, it. it's okay. not like a specific yeah. time and date. It's not specific right. times on yep. those weeks. It is on. Like Donkey yeah. Kong, boys and girls. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, go ham on it. Why? Because they're going to learn a lot about mm -hmm. the data that is presented. And of course, your voices are going to be easily heard. I'm here with you. I'll right. do my best to take the data. I have questions already because you guys are so damn smart. You already have the freaking answers that you guys already can perceive. All of you guys have God level abilities. And so we're going to ask those questions now. Um, so here we go. Qualification phase. Question. Are you or Rogue Planet Games currently taking in more suggestions? We already heard that? No. Um, why? We already heard that earlier. I hope that basically you go back and listen to it. If so, are there any plans to limit qualification times to peak slash hours on specific days of each server? Let me clarify that. Let's imagine in the future for Alpha 2 or Beta 2, whatever you want to call it. Um, we find out two weeks is too much. And everyone screams at you on Reddit and does, I called it, I guess somebody told me, me they're called salt mites. I have some work for you. Uh, this gets rid of salt mites. It's fantastic, guys. It's a product that I actually have been sponsored by. Never mind. Um, so the point I'm trying to make <laughs> is, um, are you willing to turn it into a limited qualifier time slash peak hours per server in the future to where it's like other games I played, like Lineage 2, where it was a castle siege for two hours mm -hmm. in the afternoon yep. and two hours in the morning. And that's all on Fridays and Saturdays, and that's it. That's the qualification period. You show up either in the morning and the afternoon on your server to get points on both sides, or you show up just one time because you don't have the opportunity. So willing, absolutely. Uh, right now, obviously not the case. Uh, no, no, I mean, no. like you said, it's just it's a, go. And, and that means, you know, at, uh, at balls o'clock in the morning, uh, you're getting all the same points that you would be uh, during peak, you know, during uh, prime time. So... Yes, uh, the the goal for us is so that it's important to well, okay. I don't know if these questions are gonna come up later. I don't want to. No worries. Okay, those are fine. He said agreed. Thank you yeah. so much, Ralph. Uh, I'm gonna miss <laughs> you're doing great. I'm freaking out. All right, so questions. I'm trying so hard not to talk. I know you're yeah. doing great, dude. That's fantastic. All right, question. Uh, it's hard to convince my friends to enjoy smaller group play here mm -hmm. since this update will prevent us from participating in Alpha Wars. He said it. I'm just gonna tell you. He said it. He said he's focusing, he knows it's going to be for large outfits in the first outfit war. Now, in my opinion, just as my opinion, guys, you guys can take it or leave it. It's called Outfit Wars Alpha 1. It's not called Outfit Wars Who's the Best of Freaking Planicide 2. It's called Alpha 1. I don't feel like if you guys won the Alpha 1 tournament, you are considered, quote unquote, the best in the world. No, this is a helpful introduction to the legitimate competition levels that we want to get to one day. And so I hope I answered your question. Is that correct, uh, Rel? Like oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And okay, so here's a fun fact. Um, the, yeah, alpha, yes. And whether or not we're going to have like additional alphas after this, you know, we'll, we'll see how, uh, so. how well we, we nail the, the changes. Oh. And <clears throat> one of the things that we want to do is have a sort of champions bracket so it's not just like you know, hey you you won once and then yeah you are the best in planet side too maybe it's it's like uh you know you got like first and second or like first and you know maybe you're in the bronze bracket sometimes or whatever but it's all attributing points to a larger uh scale or larger uh scoring period that will end in a like a true battle of the the best outfits uh, toward the end of the year. Right now it's slated for December, but honestly, we're kind of behind schedule. So uh, I guess we'll have to see. Awesome. Thank you so much for that answer. I have a question for you. This is another, uh, this is not written. Mm -hmm. A suggestion from my point of view to help out the small fits. Um, yes. If they go to bronze rank and they make it with a new system and they win the bronze rank tournament mm -hmm. can the bronze people who won go automatically be signed up for silver for the next tournament and those who won in silver automatically be signed up out of the three faction who won to go to gold so they don't have to grind their butts off to be ranked into gold is there a chance we can actually give the small fits a chance to just get qualified into the ranking system so that way they know they're pre-qualified because they won the bronze league and they won the so silver the league 
It's, a, it's an interesting idea. Uh, I have a feeling that would what would happen with that is that you would see it would just be the same outfits over and over, which is not something that we're we're looking. Oh no! As soon as you win the right gold now. league, you have to restart yeah. again. You start over, right? Yeah. yeah. That yeah, means you're going to yeah. get a chance to ever see a bronze league member who's never got a chance to stand up to the top of the league, and right. now he has the opportunity to go there because StarCraft Two does a or, really cool thing. Or you're talking about uh, players who are deliberately gimping their score so that they can end up in bronze, so that they get the free pass and they don't need to. The only way they can do this is turn off the freaking score system. They'll never or, or know. To, to to like try different fights, you know, to change their behavior. It's it's kind of it's just tricky. We got to try. It. It's uh, called I, Alpha I've, 2, Beta 2, whatever that is. Just keep trying the, until the you find idea the best is, system. is very interesting though. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys whoever that basically brought that idea. You know who you are. Um Okay, the next part. Uh so uh haven't found 48 players who are like-minded like me, respect level of infantry focus play can uh and calls out we request to run. Okay, that doesn't matter. Uh any plans to make Alpha wars and resources more accessible to smaller tight-knit uh, infantry focus more accessible uh, means that they're between 12 and 24 users and they are very tight now we're talking about like so tight spandex level tight uh, what is your thoughts on that uh, okay so an outfit needs needs some people right like you have small outfits and hey guess what you know maybe the system is not really you're not going to have all the fun toys that a large outfit uh, has but that being said the way that outfit scoring works right now uh, for capturing a base is that you uh, players who are in the facility area when they're earning experience the combined experience of every outfit member in that facility area contributes to the, the overall score uh, to capture the base which means that outfits that have an absurd amount of players in the same region are more likely to capture the base and that's something that we would like to change um, I was actually under the impression uh, until pretty recently that it was uh, it was limited to the top 10 or top 12 outfit members and then and uh, and the score would be accumulated just between them but that's not the case so uh, yeah so we're gonna be making some changes that allow smaller outfits um, like, so long as you have X amount of people here uh, trying to capture the facility <laughs> it will uh, you'll you'll have the same shot as somebody who has like a thousand people in the same facility so Awesome. Hey, well done, Mel. Yeah. That was great. You just basically helped me calm the nerves of every small fit group out there that it will be iterated, will be thought about for the next outfit war. So if you guys are a small fit, feel free to try to see if you can actually get to the actual bronze ranking. But you, you know, know clearly... On, uh, sorry. Go ahead, please. please. I'm You're way finish, more important but... than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, any uh, word coming so out of your mouth is gold. Osprey posted a, uh, a Reddit thread, which I'm sure you've seen, uh, showing like the, the scores that are broken down between different outfits. And yes. he did. Yes. I do okay. have that. So I, to that. And that like SKL just has like an absurd amount of score. 28,000 like, score. It's ridiculous. Versus it's everyone totally that's 1,800. Right. What's so uh, what surprises me though is that there's not, um, there's actually some, some like mid fit level uh, outfits that are actually doing really well. And also some some outfits that uh, that I didn't expect to be on there uh, that are on there. So the the system is is kind of um, it's it's interesting right now. It's certainly uh, weighted toward larger outfits, but uh, I don't think we're we're necessarily that far off from finding a good balance. Cool. And so yeah. when you say that, we're not talking about currently what's a system for Alpha One uh, qualification phase. We're talking about the ideas for the next phase. Correct. Right. Yep. Thank you. I want to clarify that for everyone. Don't think that the Alpha 1 qualification phase is the close one. He did this on purpose. I've already told you guys that they had a community of people that spent more time than me, who's doing RCTV 24 hours whenever I wake up. They did more time than me with the actual role-play games. Uh, so they deserve a chance to at least try to see their system and what it did. And they did it for free, and this is what they came up with. And it looks like you guys are too smart, and you realize the Zerg fits are going to, or big fits, or small, large fits, the five platoon sized based fits are going to get the gold rank. And let's give them that credit, guys. They did, they put in the work. That's what happens when you play MMOs. The first phase, it's a good idea. It's not going to be considered quote unquote skill based at the moment because th th you don't see freaking that money people that have the skill with 24 people even competing against five platoons is impossible so we you understand know, i kind of want to make a i kind of want to make a point 
yeah. uh, about the skill based play because that's it's a really good point. So we have a, a group of players who are they they love playing on Jaeger, which is a private well it's like semi private server yeah. and they just host their own little events or whatever. If we gave those players the the ability to just do private matches all day long, that's probably what they would do. Uh, but our goal when creating a system is to kind of get the most bang for our buck. So what one of the guidelines that we had for uh, Outfit Wars was in, in the resource system as well is to make sure that it feeds back into the main game. So like there's some thoughts that like, well, you know, this is competitive scoring. We should really only be taking competitive metrics into play. Uh, but I think that if you kind of change your mindset a little bit, it's more like the the outfits are are all contributing to the main game. And this is kind of almost a reward. Uh, so it's, I, I don't want to say it like it's straight up competitive. It's more like pseudo competitive. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this is a question coming past, of course, uh, what Lude and Slatter1 just described. Um, mm. There's only 48 people that can be selected in the participation, participation of Outfit Wars in your Outfit Ranking tab. So when you get to the preparation phase, that means that phase means you are qualified. Your name shows up in bronze, silver, and yep. gold. Correct? That's right. Then when you get that outfit um, uh, ranking where it says bronze, mm -hmm. how does it look like as far as can you show me like UI basically on your words? Do I go to the outfit tab and click on, let's say, Wilhelm Caster and say select his name? I know he's a leader, guys. But select his name and say Outfit Wars Participant, and you only get 48 of them? How does that look like? No, no, no. So, yeah, uh, having that sort of granular control would be really nice. But right now, all we have are uh, permissions. So if you go into your outfit management and you you click on one of the ranks or whatever, like if you scroll down to the bottom of the list of permissions, you can make it so only players of a certain outfit rank are eligible to participate in the Outfit War. And I think it's actually called like Outfit Wars Eligibility. Uh, and then you just check that box, and like those players can can uh, can participate. But awesome. uh, during the preparation phase, preparation phase is more like uh, players are. It's it's kind of some time to uh, to almost relax after the, uh, the the grind, the mad dash. Gives you five the, like, days, guys, to prepare. Right, which lets you uh, get your your war assets in check. Um, it kind of, or it just lets you like you know kind of take a break and and gather up. Uh, or just like communicate with your outfit mates, the people that you want to come back, you know, for the the Saturday uh, timetable. Um, and then once Outfit Wars starts, the the actual uh, phase, then players will see a click to join button um, that they can click on, and then it'll take them right to the Outfit War or Desolation that map, or they can go to the the map screen and then click on uh, Warp to Desolation because at that point the continent will be unlocked. Awesome. So, can I have uh, a question about this? I'm really into competitive players. As you can tell, I'm a shoutcaster. I guess like somebody else gave me that title. And I look at you and I make these faces. Um, the point I'm trying to make is uh, mm -hmm. to m I know I've seen this thing called from Reltor, who's made uh, Community Smash, Server Smash, Lane Smash. There's a lot of smashes out there. He's smashing probably people right now. Well done, Reltor, <laughs> and everyone out there. Oh, God. Uh, so um, the point I'm trying to make is... This man and his team of people has shown me data already to me. And I participated in that eight years ago when I actually started as a beta player uh, at an AFX Aftershocks. I know I'm name dropping, but I just want to let you guys know I did play at one point in time on TR Connery. And I was part of the TTA and I worked with these individuals to be a part of Connery Smash. And I did all those smashes. The biggest thing I saw as a problem as soon as I left the community and I got research about it is that you can leave your outfit, join another outfit who's ranked. And it's not going to be easy to stop them from basically picking up players on the NC and moving them into the gold ranking matches to get the W over another outfit. And so it's not going to always be constrained to their outfit. My thought to stop the Zerg play, to stop the um, people from thinking about um, how do we get the 48 people after spending five platoons, is, is it possible in the qualification pace? Is this possible? Say no, we cancel. Is it possible to go somewhere in the sanctuary to go and have an outfit member who has the rank to go and sign up, click, and he's now permanent, locked in place with that outfit who has to be part of qualification phase? That means once he's already locked in at 48 people maximum, I that can. Yeah. So that means you stop them from leaving outfits to go and do that jump that made everyone go crazy in the community smash, which basically brought it down. Uh. So something like that is probably possible or like there could be like a minimum amount of time you need to I, I'm not saying that we're gonna do it 
or she. Uh, <laughs> I got uh, too excited. Way too excited. Yeah. That's great. But so something like that could be possible or putting in some sort of restrictions where it's like, okay, you need to have been in the outfit for X amount of days or whatever uh, in order to participate in an outfit war. Like that's something that could be done if that becomes a problem. But let me ask you a question. If uh, players, I guess they're like ringers or, or whatever, you're pulling in players from uh, from other outfits to to do well in, in outfit wars, if those players are, I guess if, if they're participating to uh, boost outfits, and if those outfits are most likely going to be the ones who can field 48 players anyway, uh, which would mean that they're larger outfits overall, like is that is that necessarily a bad thing? Is the inter-community... Uh, interaction taking place is that is that a bad thing that's a good question my my answer will be after this qualification phase mm -hmm. um and i look forward to having a chance to have another opportunity to sit down, sit down with you and have a post interview of after this all happens guys because i can easily tell you no it's not a good idea but i'm not going to say that because i know that there's a question down below that answers a question already for me so I say, yes, it's a great idea. So that way we can actually have the factions love each other again and handshake. But mm -hmm. I'm going to talk more about the, uh, the next questions here. So that way I don't skip anymore. Thank you guys for that question, what Rel just said. And we're going to learn more about that post in the future. And uh, we'll learn more about that either via Twitter or via other, m other channels. Um, thank you, Rel. Uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, okay. Um, so this is a part of it. So as Desolation caters to speedy redeploys and as the qualifier is going to be... Eh, as for the qualifiers, is it going to be similar to that style and timing, or is it going to be a marathon, quote unquote? We already talked about it. It's a marathon, guys. Two weeks, work your butt off, try to get in that bronze and silver and uh, gold, and we're looking forward to seeing that. Is that going to be live streamed by any chance? The uh, yeah. So the first half of Wars match is going to be live streamed. We'll probably be looking at Emerald because it's more conducive to uh, to our schedule. Uh, yeah, yeah, because they'll be in their prime time. They'll be doing their outfit wars, and then we'll be at at work uh, and capable. Actually, you know what? Nope, it happened on Saturday. Uh, I lied. Um, <laughs> not not lied. Uh, so so there's no so basically we're, we're, gonna we're, not gonna, we're not going to we're not going to be able to have it live. But is there a possibility that no no no? You're you're definitely going to have it live. Like we're we're going to stream it. It's that's that's a goal. So whether or not that's streaming from our house, which it very likely will be. Uh, or taking uh, some of us and then going uh, into work on a Saturday. Like and that's being over like happen. six to eight feet away and just air high fiving. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, it just needs to be one of us. That's it. Yeah. Just We're just going to wear plastic fly. suits. Uh, right. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Hazmat suits. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, at that time, if we basically do enough work uh, to wash our hands and stuff, it's possible to sit next to each other. Just go through the precautions um, and try not to touch your face when you're at those right. places. Or kiss. Um, yeah. yeah I'm, <laughs> Just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. Uh, so on Monday, April 6th, uh, is the phase where your outfits will see uh, in the onboard tab. And that means you're qualified. We said correct. That means on April 6th, guys, you can see if your outfit made it. Uh, once that's settled, uh, you know where the cut is basically is, like you said earlier, all outfits. You have a chance to take a breather. Get your resources to max and also mm -hmm. pick up the main resources you need. That means do not pick up another Bastion. Do not pick up Steel Rain. It's already on the website. They will not be part of Outfit Wars. And I said it, and it's also on the website, so I don't want to hear any from anybody. So again, do not pick up Steel Rain. Do not pick up Bastion on April 6th. Focus on getting your overall strikes. Focus on getting anvils and other products that will help your strategy to win and max out your resources. When those are done, you get picked up on April 11th on Outfit uh, Wars Alpha 1 War Phase, do all of those resources at 300 weight and your full resources transfer into Desolation? Yes. Yes, ah. it does. So, yeah, it's not uh, like you don't you don't take the resources. It's all, it's all in your outfit. You can use your outfit resources at, at uh, any given time. Yeah, we don't lock it. So, like, even if you, if you wanted to make stuff mid-game, you could totally do it. I see. Uh, I'm going to throw something out there. Uh, mm -hmm. There is an epic video that I was shared to by a friend from this community. I'm calling you all my friends now, to be honest. I mean, you guys have been thick and thin through me. We've gone through so much. And you know who you are. I'm looking right at you, buddy. He used Steel Rain to change the entire tides of the entire battle 
at the last second on the continent lock. It was the most epic steel rain drop position wise. They knew exactly how to take advantage of it. Well done to who you are. And if you wish to share it to everyone, that's really, really up to you. And I loved watching that video. So I'm letting you know, share it. Uh, anyways. Um, okay. So this is from the group of outfit leaders question. This is a group of them. I don't want to name all of them, but it, it came from a group of them. Uh, is it possible to separate bastion polling permissions from other reserved war assets title? Uh, we want to let new players use the orbital strikes, but not bastions. Thank you so much, Rel, for taking the time to even give us this opportunity to ask you this question. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so uh, I, I do feel like we should have a bastion only permission. It's just not something that we had time to, to put in alongside the other things. Uh, that that kind of that concept was kind of in, in flux at the time. But uh, yeah, definitely, we definitely want to do a, a bastion specific permission because it's kind of, uh, it's, it's like it's outside the scope of everything else <laughs> in, in the outfit armory. So yeah, it makes sense. Hunter Money Pants is the one that gave me that intel. Okay. That nobody knows I said that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, guys, that was everything about Outfit Wars. Uh, as far as that's concerned, let's go down to the next outfits. That was the biggest question topic. And now we're going to go faster on the other topics because that one, in my opinion, was the most, most intensified one. I literally got so many DMs that I felt like I was working full time over here. And so the point is, I hope I answered all those questions. Uh, if there's anything else that you guys want to know about uh, War Outfit Wars, we know we will have a post opportunity. I'm going to ask Garel right now. Can we have a post opportunity for another interview to learn more about what the community comes up with new questions after uh, April 11th, of course, and on, like two weeks or a month after that, to give you guys a chance to talk. But we also want to be involved in some of the thoughts that you're coming up with it, so that way you don't make a new one called Alpha 2 without hearing our community and communities from Favor One, Mofker, Commander Series, getting a chance to sit down again. Is that possible? All right, all right, Archie. So like straight up, uh, you're gonna put me on the spot here and then uh, and mark me down for another interview. Yes. Like, like, what? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. Yes! Yeah, yeah it's fine. Don't worry about it. He said it, ladies and gentlemen! We got Rogue Planet Games to accept a second interview! Listen, transparency! is off the roof right now ladies and gentlemen you guys were thinking that this company rogue planet games is whatever it was five eight years back you guys give it up to these guys huge heart out for these men oh i'm gonna have to go just get some chips and salsa after this um okay so wow i just cannot believe what's happening right now i need to calm down i'm sorry Ralph. let's go ahead and focus um you were really focused you're good uh so apollo uh, is the next one who submitted this with snipes. This is a combo question. Um, submitted by Apollo PS2. This outfit is ATTV, the muses of Apollo. Server, Emerald US East. Faction, Bono Sovereignty. This guy, with, submitted by snipes. This individual has also questioned the same question together. Snipes represents the NCIV, the NC Initiative, working closely with Mukas, who is the lead of the NC Initiative, who did a interview with Rel. Server is Miller, Europe. Faction, new conglomerate. Here's their question. It probably has already been answered, I apologize. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and uh, get their question in. Um, I'm trying to get the damn link up. Guys, if you guys have not seen Apollo PS2 stream, that is his stream right there. Why am I basically giving everybody their links? Why am I sharing everybody's Twitch links, their YouTube links, and making sure you guys all understand this? Because it makes our community stronger. It makes Planetside 2 the strongest community that I have ever seen. And it gives us opportunity to help other content creators like yourself to build the brand, to get more viewership on Twitter and Twitch, to get more viewership on YouTube and get that eyes out there. YouTube's algorithm will go off the charts like what we did on Steam. The same thing's going to happen with Twitch when we have more and more players watch Twitch. When your guys are eating, when you guys are in the bitter, uh, when you guys are literally anywhere, just have it open and cause a new view on a new person because we're going to keep bumping up on the charts and automatic advertisements happening. So thanks guys for being with me from January 8th and listening to my ranting and I hope it really makes it well for your game. And of course my game too, Planet Side 2. Uh, okay, Apollo PS2, Snipes, their question. There's a clip from Rel who talks about 
very uh that talks about um we're hoping that uh planicide two's outfit wars will split the people up and have them have their own outfits to be participating and now we know that's not the case now that he had the opportunity to tell us right here guys that was the clip originally on the stream i know you guys all sent me that clip like 20 times i know it's not true anymore we had an opportunity to hear him live he's actually the live guy right there look at that smile uh, hold on <laughs> yeah. okay sorry keep going no problem and so the question is very large outfits five platoons thick are dominating all base captures at the moment are there mm -hmm. any plans to after this preseason so that we can have multiple outfits existing in this new update versus all players in the future of merging into one to even be competitive with this existing systems in place we are we understand it's alpha one phase just asking for clarification based on that data presented by alfred wars quote now i have more i have more uh the next question uh is what would rel what would you rel like to see from smaller 100 players or less outfits that can only cap single bases at a time to do in order to qualify for outfit wars against larger outfits that can play on all the continents throughout the day and into the late a.m thank you for your time greetings from ncib and attb so um we already <laughs> answered that question earlier but go ahead Rel, if you want to summarize it yeah so uh we need to uh be able to throttle the amount of uh outfit members at a base that can contribute to its capture that way uh, even smaller outfits have the ability to capture bases more readily. <clears throat> Outside of that, um, yeah, like more more players is it, it matters a lot right now. But uh, I think there's a a middle ground to be had. We don't want to completely just like there, there's talks about like hard limits on on outfits and, and that sort of thing. But um, a lot of those players have kind of cultivated communities over time. Where it's it's hard to say like what the the cutoff point would be, right? Like where we like is it how many is is too many players? Is it a thousand? Is it five hundred? Is it two hundred? So it's it's kind of um, it's something that we need to continually evaluate. But as far as smaller outfits, yeah, we're gonna totally uh, let them participate more. You heard him. It is again said. Look at his face. He's excited. Listen up, guys. Smaller outfits. Don't worry about what's happening right now. Let them try to get the data they need. Let's basically ride the wave. Let's give these guys a chance to learn about their game that they designed and then give them an opportunity to come back to you guys and offer you better food. Right now, we just got incredible buffets, and I know everything on the table isn't what you want to eat. So just give them a minute to go and find what you guys liked in the buffet so they can recater it and send it out there again. There's only 30 of them. It's not a triple A title, guys. 30 of them is not triple A because triple A is this game. This game is that good. It can be considered a triple A, but they don't have the numbers to make that happen. And you guys have the numbers to make it happen by working with the examples that other people are giving me. And I'm telling you guys how to advertise on our end to make this company the most legendary game that there is. So thanks, guys, for working with me. And, of course, it's all from the voices from people like Rapid, like Dr. Muddy Pants, like you, Madman, the community leaders in Planetside 2. I can't click the damn Discord. I'm so sorry. Wilhelm Casper, I'm going to just you know all you are. The community leaders of Planetside 2 in the RCTV Discord. Those guys asked me to be on that title only after they showed me what they've done for Planetside 2. And so thank you guys for showing me what you've done and how much you've changed the game. You guys are amazing, and there's more of you on that list, and I'm so sorry. I can't push the button or else I'll ruin the whole stream. Um, let's continue. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, okay, so next question. Uh, submitted by... You know who you are. Dr. Money Pants. Not only does he have money in his pants, but he's also got a PhD. He represents WTAC, the Western Tactical in France. Representing Connery, U.S. West, Faction, New Conglomerate. This is a cooperation submission that is very similar to each other. This question also is submitted by Time Trooper. Outfit by RVNX. The Last Ravens. We will make sure you do not lose the Last Raven and make it the Reborn Ravens. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, server, <laughs> Soltech Asia. Faction, the Terran Republic. So that means we got people on Connery and people on Soltech talking about the same question, which is important. That's why I combined them together. So question number one, 
which is going to be then said at question number two. The opportunities for true combined arms, which is infantry, armor, air, working in unison, are rare at the moment uh, and usually are found around vehicle hex capture points. Too often, mass armored convoys or air squadrons are waiting outside of bases doing nothing while infantry are getting the work done. Are there any plans on creating more combined arm opportunities for all three to work together constructively so drivers and pilots can contribute to the main objective? Question number two. Can we see more outdoor vehicle capture points, perhaps tied to spawn room controls? I'd help. It, it would help add combined arms into the current meta of infantry capture points. Examples, there's a spawn room. A vehicle shows up. Only vehicles can capture it. And then it switches to that team. And so is that possible, Rel? Yeah, actually, we uh, we tried a concept uh, with with uh, hard spawn bunkers back. This was probably three years ago now. It was it was actually before uh, combined arms initiative. It was, it was kind of a part of it, and it didn't work that well. But I don't think that our implementation was that great either. So I I do um, think that we can certainly get more vehicle capture points and vehicle style capture points in. Uh, whether or not they need to control the uh, spawns like within a base or uh, maybe just the goal is to, to control the, the capture points that are you know outside so it, it really depends um, that's we need to be thinking about that sort of thing moving forward because a lot of the, yeah a lot of the problems that uh, your uh, your question submitters were uh, mentioning are they're definitely real and combined arms is kind of the name of the <laughs> Dr. Money Dance uh, is kind of the name of the game so uh yeah, no, we, we definitely, um, there, there's certainly ideas, uh, but I wouldn't say there's plans to implement anything too quickly. Awesome. Yeah. And so my question is one more time so I can clarify it because I was getting too excited basically throwing money to represent Dodge Muddy Pants and Time Trooper. I couldn't really do a better one. Um, so the combined arms right now uh, is basically something that these guys are looking for, and there's more than just the two of them who submitted. Um, what would you say is the current time frame for seeing something like that six months from now, eight months from now? No, I'm not going to quote you on it. I know it sucks to quote something and then it does not even show up because things happen. Right. Guys, before the stream, I had... So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a better timetable. Uh, oh when we when we adjust to... Re <laughs> <laughs> when next we adjust uh, terrain you will see more of these elements start to come into play. So, I mean, not before then. So, like, I'm not going to give you months. I'm not going to give you weeks. I'm not even going to give you a year. It's just, it'll happen when it happens. You heard him. You heard him, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And you know that sound effect. When this begins! Okay, you know what that means. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for answering that question. This has been insane. I mean, everyone in this community has been so freaking epic. Look at everyone in chat. They freaking love you. Can I get like any type of emoji to spam chat to let them know this man's answering freaking questions? He's answering every question. And I love this man, man. This is amazing. Uh, I freaking love it. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what happened to my voice. Um, okay. Next question. Look at the emojis, man. That's the freaking love from the community. You guys are so freaking cool, man. And you too, Rel, man. Honestly, big heart goes out to you, man. If I had a chance to hug the crap out of you, I'd jump on you and rub my face on you. I'm like, I freaking love you. But you know what I mean. Um, uh, yeah, there's like a <laughs> pandemic happening right now. I know, we can't get close enough. <laughs> I'm just going to be like, just like sitting there like, get me in there. Get me in there. Uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Submitted by Clutch. This is the next one, boys and girls. I don't know if I can start yet. Yeah, the emojis are going intense. <laughs> this is submitted by Clutch. The Alpha Outfit. Kusa. Clutch Tastic USA. Server Emerald US East. Faction The Terran Republic. His question What is your version for new continents in the future of PS2? Let's have some fun here. Here's a fun fact from him. Where, where would you like to see PS2 in the future, and where would you rather aim towards PS3 or continue amping up PS2? That's a two-part question. Okay. And, Wait, uh, was let's it do the first question. or content? Uh, content, I believe. So let me read this. Where would okay. you like to see PS2 in the future, uh, and would you rather aim towards PS3 or continue amping up PS2? 
I don't really know when that time frame is. That's his question. So what is your vision for new contents in the future of PS2? We'll start with that question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so let me give you the, the boring answers, I guess, to start. So we need to come up with a better way to uh, incentivize or engage players on a daily and I would say like a seasonal uh, cadence. And that's giving you uh, a, a goal at the end of your session. I think that's important kind of for the, the longevity of, of Planet Side 2. Um, if you wanted something that's a little bit more off the wall, then probably toying with other game elements. And uh, there, there was a question, I think, earlier uh, from Favor or... or oh, and Jess, you read it? What? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Uh, I was like, okay, I'm not paying attention to chat before. yet. I'm trying to get through all the outfits first. Uh, by the way, sorry, guys, chat, you guys are doing amazing. And we will get to you as soon as I get a chance to go through all the outfits. Listen, guys, I spent literally 24 hours the moment I closed it down on Monday, guys. That was basically 616. I had to spend 24 hours the next 24 with talking to outfit leaders, talking to their members, getting the question basically organized to this interview. So let's give them the outfit leaders who spent their time as outfit leaders to go through hundreds of questions. They went through hundreds and they basically slashed all the questions and they found the research on their own and helped each and individual get validated. This is incredible, man. We just wiped up almost a million questions for just getting the outfits together to get one question each. And that means you guys have basically turned their workforce and their workload extremely down. They don't have to go in the forums for the next week probably and sleep because all these questions came from you guys and you guys work together to basically create one amazing question. Thank you guys. Continue, Rel. I don't even know what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, what is so your I... vision for new continents in the future of PS2? Co content. Content. Con continents. Continents. So continents. you're talking about like Osher okay. or like other, oh. other maps. Okay, that's a totally different thing. Okay, so... Oh, uh, continents. Wow, I see. Um, so Osher was... Uh, it was it was probably the, uh, the biggest... Um, failure in, uh, in kept uh, unkept promises. I mean, not that it was ever promised, but it was really like, like really, really attempted. Um, and it's kind of depressing that, uh, that it never manifested. But now that we do have new, uh, a new team, uh, a larger team, then that sort of thing is more possible. I'll say that. That's awesome. What do we, uh, uh, can you give me a side frame of timing on that do you think it's the we're going to go to the other question that will talk about your phases but is mm -hmm. this part of the phase you're thinking about at this phase or second uh, phase or third phase it's you're, it's in the back of your mind you're thinking about it and you think it's actually going to be kim coming oh um because right now a lot of people are on four continents it's full we have thirteen thousand players now and people <laughs> want to see a fifth continent it, okay so so nothing right now nothing right now is set in stone Okay. Very well said. Uh, now let's talk about fun facts. This is fun. Okay, just good. I'm gonna skip over the hard part. Hold on. Yes. There's no more <laughs> on the actual point, guys. So we're just basically passing the next question. So it's not concreted, but you're thinking about it, correct? Yes. Perfect. That's all we need to know. Yep. Let's have some fun here. There's a question. Where would you like to see Planetside Two be in the future? We'll start with that. Let's what see. is your vision? What is the rel so, vision? This is so fun. the, the rel yeah. vision of uh, if Planetside Two is uh, something that's even larger than what we have now. So, I mean, people can, can jump to conclusions and be just like, like, yeah, we want to go to space. And it's just like, okay, that's great. But, but that's not, it doesn't make your, uh, uh, let's see. Okay, let me, let me rephrase this. Um, how can you create more permanence in Planet Side 2? How can you uh, make it so what you're fighting for actually matters and the, uh, for like a longer time rather than just rotating out the continent and then doing it again right um and in order to do that i feel like our factions need to kind of be expanded a little bit in that they uh factions are supposed to be representative of uh of not just the like what's happening with a war but also they should have their own like motivations and goals and i think the lore kind of alludes to that but as far as gameplay purposes it's it's a little bit um a little bit shallow you're kind of just on a team right makes sense so yeah so in yeah. the future of ps2 so if we can summarize it down um let's imagine just a summary in my mind 
Um, if we go ahead, we make a fifth continent, we make Alpha Wars legit. Uh, when I say legit, we're talking about to a point where you all know that that's the way Planet Side has to be. And we all understand that that's just the difficulty of 1,200 players in a map to create the best outfit or design to say, hey, maybe it's not going to be at the level of what you see in, I don't know, I have to say the words, but you know, it was a big game, uh, Fortnite, where they have the uh, competition show up at MLG and they have like all those basically top streamers basically there. When we get to a point where we're actually successfully saying that this is actually where we want to be and you actually have your fifth continent, maybe sixth continent, God knows know what, and we polish as much as we can is... Uh, is that where you'll start working on Planet Side 3, or can you do it simultaneously while still giving Planet Side 2 love? Uh, I think that. So. So, first off, question. anytime you. Well, anytime you even say the words Planet Side 3, you have a journalist jumping over saying that you've announced its production, which is totally not. Totally not the Ladies case. Ladies and gentlemen, totally I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that kind of... Um... But hey, listen, any publicity yeah. is good publicity. I'm telling you right now, I know that from my end. I had people basically smash me down, tell me all these things. It just gets the word out. It's actually good publicity. So, yeah, what's, what's interesting go that... for it! I'm just kidding. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it, it kind of... Uh, it's it's kind of unfortunate, I think, that it, that it happens. But one thing that it does showcase is that people want it, right? Like, they're willing to take what you've actually said and, like, contort it for their own purposes because they want, you know, a Planet Side 3. And us as a... Uh, uh, as a development team who is kind of uh, thinking about the future at all, any point of the day. Uh, yeah, no, we'd totally love to see a Planet Side 3 as well. I mean, who wouldn't, right? Stop. Right. Don't do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't know. But, uh, <laughs> I was like, ah! oh, oh, hmm. uh, Okay, so. Was, he actually saw my head yeah, move. My finger that. was this close when dodging it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, what Jesus? What else were we talking about? Oh, we're talking um, about the idea of can Planet Side Three be in the works uh, while working oh, on Planet right. Side Two, or do we have to put a hard stop on the actual growth of the game to go and move to yeah. thirty developers, or is yeah. there a chance to see more developers jump in to focus on Planet Side Three, moving you over to Planet Side Three because we freaking love mm -hmm. the crap out of you? But you get the idea. So I, I think that, uh, and just just to be clear, like I've been in the industry for almost four years now, so I'm not like a scion when it comes to the understanding of of the all the processes, but I think that uh, the development can work in parallel. You will be having, like typically a game takes about three years to make proper. Planet Side 2 is only made in a year and a half so far as I know, which is kind of insane. I mean, if that's that's accurate, I'd have to go back and check. No, 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 no. That's um, freaking awesome. It's just, this the idea if it's an hour and a, a year and a half is incredible. I told you guys it takes about three years to make a freaking decent game. And they right. did it with the freaking year and a half. These guys are amazing. Well done, buddy. Honestly. So if, I mean, if that's accurate, I'm, I'm only like remembering... Listen. It's okay. Remember, yeah. Guys, fact, this is this is not me, internet. This is, guys, me. listen. These uh, when I say the words, <laughs> we're just having fun here. That means I said, let's have some fun here. We're just talking. We don't need now, to fact listen, check you can't the fact-checking. Can't say anything on the internet without it being. Oh, fact. you're right. You're right. But again, I have been we're debunked, and I love you guys helping me learn more and more <laughs> about this uh, entire community game. So thank you guys for finding it and letting me know, so I can actually go back on stream next time and correct myself. And uh, I'm sorry, Ralph, for putting you guys in that and that. So if you get any flack, I'm going to basically take the I'm flack for you. I'll be a max unit. I'll stand right in front of you. And I'll die and just revive me. Multiple times. So I'll be like, I'm, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but to answer your question, I do think yeah. that those that uh, the game's going to be developed in parallel. Awesome. Very if cool. If that were to happen. <laughs> awesome. If that were to happen. We did hear it, basically, guys. We're not going to deny that fact that Andy Sites or the team at Rogue Planet says that they own all leadership and direction for Planetside franchise and are aiming to get Planetside 3 out in the market. Not soon. They are aiming for it. Because in my opinion, and you guys know me as much as you know me from January 8th, I believe there is no other game like Planetside. And so if you guys think that Planetside 3 will not come out, I guarantee you somebody else will make it happen. It's going to be them. And we know Rel has put in the heart and soul into his product. And I see it in his YouTube videos. I see it in his literally eyes when he basically spends time making this amazing content. And we'd love to see more YouTube videos of him. We'd love to see him showcase himself more on Twitch streams. We'd love to see who, who he is as a person. But guys, I'm going to ask him a personal question. And you're going to learn more about this aspect of who I am versus Rel. I am probably the most extreme extrovert you're ever going to meet. The reason why is because I absorb your energy every time i talk to you guys i get energy every time you guys say anything i get energy and that's who i am and i'm extrovert extroverts get energy by talking to anybody and you put me alone in an editing room 
literally, you put me alone in any room. This is what it feels like. Anyone? I need help. And so, oh. Jesus, all the sound effects just messed up. And so, um, the point I'm trying to make is, an extrovert cannot basically handle being alone that long. I'm literally like a sad bunny. And so that's the example of an extrovert that I know of. And then you got extroverts and introverts. Introverts can be more extroverted than my can. They can be more extroverted, but they need the energy on their own to absorb that energy on their own, knowing there's an event on Friday from Monday. Give them time to go to that event, and then they can be super extroverted. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Rel will show up. My name is Rel. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But the example is, uh, that's the example I have. Introverts basically get energy on their own, of course, with close friends and the people they trust. And extroverts basically get energy from any human being or animal or anything in sight. Uh, and so that's what I know about the definition of it. There's nothing more to that to understand the concept of those two individuals. And so I could be wrong as far as my definition. That's my opinion. Fact check me if you want. But that's my interpretation from every introvert that I suck dry their energy is like at zero and I don't they want to see me again for like two months and so I'm sorry guys for draining you <laughs> it was really tasty though um okay let's go and talk about the next one thanks Ralph, for not dying on me in the middle of the stream uh okay so we're gonna go to the next individual here we go submitted this is submitted by crypt the bear last I don't even understand your name but it's a great name uh this is uh the outfit is the real Muye Grant uh, gang. Server Cobalt Europe. Faction New Conglomerate. I am so sorry for butchering your name, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and basically read his message this way then. We, the real Muye gang, wish to have a Muye statue as our outfit decal. Thus. Our question is, will, when will Rogue Planet Games bring back the ability for outfits to add their own decals? Basically, Player Studios. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, outfit decals, <laughs> outfit decals are, they are on in an indefinite hold. Uh, so the, the real talk when it comes down to it is that the Player Studio is no longer accepting new, uh, you can. We're accepting content from uh, creators that have already registered uh, and have submitted their uh, their W fours or whatever. Um, but new uh, submissions or new creators are not being registered on the site anymore. Uh, as you, far uh, as can you elaborate else, why? I I think it was a software issue that caused kind of um, this issue for us that we then had to talk to legal about and something something something. This happened back in uh, actually a year ago go almost uh, i think may of last year so if somebody wants to go back and dig into to why that's there um but uh one thing that had been a goal at the time was kind of revamping player studio so we uh we haven't talked about that on the new team not in any length but it is something that we probably need to because planicide 2 does a, a good job when it comes to uh player studio um getting content from skillful uh, creators into the game however and this is kind of a, it's, it's, it's kind of been been known throughout the the game's history is that it takes us longer to process an outfit decal than it does for like any sort of return on investment we're gonna have or gonna make. And you can kind of make the argument that like, oh, well, it'll uplift my outfit and like we'll be super happy and that sort of thing. And while there is definitely value in that, it's it's still really hard to justify the time because our time is so finite. So. What I think that we should probably look to do in the future is having some sort of uh, outfit decal like creation system, or at the very, I mean, that's, that's probably like, probably similar not to games that I played game. earlier, like Disintegration has an outfit creation system mm -hmm. in the game, and you can actually go and Photoshop literally eight to 10 layers, and they have pre existing products in there. So you can just go make it anything you want and customize it to your outfit decal. Yeah, that I think way that you would be. Know Sorry. Yeah, oh, go ahead. That way you guys know that uh, it doesn't require an insane staff to go through a million sub submissions. And that way they can just go ahead and grab the product and put it there and not have to give you a W4 to get paid for every submission because somebody buys it, gives you a percentage back. That was an idea that wasn't 2020. 2020, we want to basically give the chance 
to not have them work through so many tax documents and basically go through extra work to hire a lawyer to make sure that guy got paid. Uh, it's just insane to even think about giving players money for a, a, a an idea, and they did it, which was amazing for all of us. But I don't think Player Studios should be basically um, p paying every single person for sending, it, uh, sending something in. In today's world, all of us are Photoshop experts. Back then, we really needed content. When I started in 2012, I didn't know how to use any of these systems. I didn't know how to record that I'm talking to you right now. So it's a lot more abundant now, and I look forward to seeing these developers actually try to create a system to where people can submit, and all you do is hire one person to say yes, no, yes, no to submissions, and you can use those little de decals to customize your own layering system in the game. It's a UI design. Is that possible, Rel? So it's, to, to be clear, like yeah. that would be the ideal. That would be the ideal, oh. but it is, it's something completely new. So it's it's not to say that we can even do it. Like who knows if the the tech is correct, but um, there there are probably ways around it. Like maybe, uh, like right now there's a submission uh, cost. Like actually, people who are submitting uh, their, their first item to Player Studio, I think it costs them twenty five dollars to do that submission. But um, but that doesn't actually cover anything for us. So. Yeah, it's it's just a discussion that needs to happen at some point. But right now, uh, even despite the uh, how outfit centric this update was, it's not the right time to have that conversation. Makes sense. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And so, Player Studios has been a very big part of one of the questions I was going to ask earlier. I uh, know mm -hmm. later in the subject. And so, if I can summarize it in this in a small sense, um, is it similar to content uh, for continents or other other uh, maps being made? Is Player Studio that important in the scheme of things? Or so, do you think that's not? I'm just curious. I, I, so you certainly can't directly monetize the, the buildings, right? But um, I think that it's a, it's a cool idea to have the, the community you know, do base designs and that sort of thing. Like I see a lot of cool things happen in Unreal and, and that sort of Oh, uh, sorry about that. I think I'm talking about the wrong subject. I'm talking about um, when you basically go to Osher and make the next content. I apologize. Uh, so Osher map or the next map that you're trying to make basically after the four uh, maps that we have already. Um, uh -huh. right now, is that basically more important to basically produce or focusing on the update that just came out and basically focus on gotcha. Alpha Wars, okay. uh, player studio, where does that fit in the, mm. in the space of the timeline? I uh, honestly don't have a good answer. Good. Thank you. I, yeah. I don't have a good answer. The, we certainly have a backlog of, uh, of some player studio items that need to be processed still. Uh, and those, uh, those creators like certainly can continue to, to make stuff, um, for the game. But as far as like doing new submissions, honestly, we need a, a whole new uh, pipeline. So with that being said, it's, yeah, it's definitely a larger conversation, um, which certainly shouldn't be neglected. But right now we're obviously uh, really hammering on escalation. And then we got to uh, to be able to follow this update up, um, kind of uh, to settle back into a, a decent cadence. Okay. So I, yeah, I can't, I can't say. No problem. Uh, where that falls on the priority list. I appreciate that. I'm just going to go tell Andy real quick. Andy, can you do me a favor and basically get back to me? If you have a chance, to just give me a DM about the uh, player studios and give uh, <laughs> more of that info. Thank you. If you uh, want to message him, you would probably do that. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Please don't. I'm just joking. I'm just <laughs> but thank you, man. Um, I appreciate that. And so you guys know all your outfit guys, your submissions are coming up. And so we're going to go with the next individual. And um, after this individual, we're gonna go ahead and take a break. Uh, so that way we can give us a chance to go use, you know, restroom and whatever the hell we need for a 10 minute break. We'll come back in a second. So this is the next question. This is submitted by Rel himself. What? Oh, I mean rapid. Do close me. <laughs> I don't remember doing that. I don't. I want you to know rapid, your team is going to basically change this game. It's going to give new players a chance to really enjoy a good tutorial intro where all of us can get together and give the right information. This outfit is BSLD, the Guardian Shield on server Emerald US East. The faction is a new conglomerate. And these guys got the world's first! Bastion Fleet Carrier at 6.47 a.m. I had to wake up and have less than one hour of sleep to get a DM and say, Archie, can you show up and record the Bastion's first Fleet Carrier? And I said, I would be glad to. 
and I build up with as much energy as can muster to give that video a world to see. Thank you guys, everybody in Planetside 2, for making this freaking opportunity a memorable one for all of us. I'm not joking. So let's give it up to play that rapid scene. We're spending so many hours to make this happen for all of us. Sorry about that. <laughs> Turn down the hill. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and show you guys the simple things that they're doing. They're called the Planetside Guide Team. Planetsideguide.com slash help out. Check it out, guys. They've done some epic work right now, and they're looking forward to basically getting more of you guys out there to use your knowledge about the game to make it more efficient for new players. I hope you guys can still hear me. Uh, if not, can I get somebody who I uh, can basically say in caps that Arshu Timmy, can you hear me? Say yes or no. Um, at the same time, we're looking at right now, that's their actual Planetside Guide team. And we're also looking at um, this location here is their Discord. I'm replaying this one again. Whatever, I'll make it more intense. All right. That's their Discord location. So what I want to let you guys know, Rapid came to me and he called me fam. I'm not sure what it means, but it sure feels good. Thank you, uh, Rel. I appreciate that. And his goal is to get the four Planicide Musketeers in our Planicide Guide Team Discord for moral support. We, we have Justin G, which is Justin Golden Bow, or Bow. I apologize for the last thing. Thanks, man. It means a lot. And now we request to have an opportunity of a lifetime to have Rel join our Discord. Just for moral support and nothing more. We will be looking forward to getting Andy and Carto and the RPG staff as well. If you are listening, we would love to have you guys join too. The community would love to see more of Rogue Planet people in this Discord just to validate the project and the effort that they're putting in. They don't want any money. They don't want anything more than to know that you guys are paying attention to their efforts. And that's really... Honestly, what I've noticed this community really wanted to see from Plan uh, Rogue Planet Games, just their face alone has made a huge difference for me, and I hope it's done it for you too. And so, internally, if you wish to spread that Discord link to have any developer get their link up top at Planetside Guide Team, that's all they want. So we don't need your help. Just joining to see you guys at the top would make us so happy. So we're going to leave it at that. And we're going to go ahead and take a commercial break until we come back in less than 10 minutes. So I just want to let you guys know, you guys were amazing. Let's go ahead and switch it over commercial break before we have a chance to hear Rel personally. Oh, this is fantastic. Dude, Rel, man. <laughs> I have to say, man, we did pretty well. I mean, ah, mm, I love this commercial. Kill me. This is Kill me on that. What is happening? <laughs> I just realized we're still on. Oh my God. We're going to go be right back right now. We'll see you guys in 10.
All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys had a chance to go use the restroom because I just did. Oh, it felt amazing. And so I have my new drink ready to drink. And at the same time, uh, thank you guys for giving us that 10-minute break. We really needed it. Um, all right, we're going to go back to the, the submission from the Planicide Guide Team by Rapid. Uh, his goal is to get all four Planicide Musketeers and their guide team, this team Discord for moral support. We have Justin G. Thank you so much for Justin Golobach for stopping by and getting that title for the Rogue Planet Games title. And now we request the opportunity to get Rel to join that Discord. And we're going to go and say the last part. We don't need your help. Just joining and seeing you guys at the top would make us so happy. Now, I'd like to hear Rel's opinion. Yeah, so actually, uh, during the break, Arshi showed me the website. And it's, it's a good start. Like, this is... Uh, the Planetside 2 community needs guides. And uh, I mean, like Iridar's site was up for a while. I, actually, I don't know if that's still around. And that was a great source of, of information. Like Stuff like that needs to exist. Um, regarding the uh, the Discord invite, I think I have to respectfully decline. I don't like to uh, to jump into too many of these Discords if I can help it. Um, but, Thank you uh, so much, Ralph, for basically I, that's coming out and letting us know your honest opinion. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that was his first no of the day! That was halftime, and he's got his first no. Rapid, my heart goes out to you, but it doesn't mean it's the end. That means he's looking for more quality in there, making it more efficient. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, we don't know. But Rapid, I'm here for you. And again, thank you guys for basically showing up to America's Got Talent. And uh, we're just saying, basically, we want you guys to work on your voice a little bit more, the vocal cords, uh, maybe a little bit of your dancing, a little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it just needs a little bit more work. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a no for me. Yep, it's a no for him. All right, we're going to go basically pass over there to uh, Jenny. Jenny, what do you think? <laughs> Kidding. Um, thank you so much, Rapid, for applying. You guys are super cool, and uh, <laughs> let, let him talk. <laughs> this is everybody. I will let him talk, no problem, guys. And he said no, and we're going to go ahead and move on to the next subject. Thank you, Rapid, for that submission. And we will bring it back. We will ask this question again in the future. Um, all right. So this is the next individual, the next outfit. Submitted by Mike Blink. Don't know how to say the rest of it. Blink Chet. Outfit name. B-J-A-Y. Virgin Airlines. I'm just kidding. Virgin Normies. Cobalt. Uh, the server is Cobalt Europe. Faction. The new conglomerate. Question. Will you remove the level cap and implement a recurring prestige system, for example? Mm. So I think uh, one of the... Okay, so the reason that we... Okay, let's go back a couple of years, right? So battle rank uh, got increased to 120. And then people wanted... Uh, or like we were looking for an easy, an easy win, right? Just by like increasing the battle rank at the time. There was like financial concerns and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but I was like, I, I pushed back against that. Um, and this was, it was with, uh, yeah, th this was uh, quite a while ago uh, because I wanted to see a real prestige system in the game. And uh, ASP is kind of what that, that turned into. And I think that we, we even need to take ASP and kind of um, uh, go back to the drawing board on some of that stuff. Uh, no plans for doing that, uh, I would say this year, but. Um, Oh, so to get back to your question, though, the the reason that you don't want it to recur just infinitely is while it creates a, a cool, um, like, long pull progression for certain players, what we use it for internally, and I think what, um, like, MMO expansions use it for is to help um, create a an immediate re-engagement of players. So, like, as soon as you you bump up the, the the battle ranks or the levels or whatever, like players go and they they do all the content, right? Move through it. Um, if you could imagine somebody Makes just sense. kind of doing that infinitely, it's like you don't get the spike. So it, it's just another lever that you don't have access to. I see. Yeah. And so my my question would be like, so like summarizing it to other games like Modern Warfare, uh, where they can do it a hundred times, right? And they get a new decal or new ranking with stars on it to represent right. how many times they did it. Is that something that you would be interested in doing? Because a lot of the veterans have already maxed it. Yeah, yeah, ASP. Um, I think that... Uh, like at least 45 of them that had a chance to talk to them last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. Like, it for the people who wanted to grind it out, 
like it's actually not a long grind. You know, it took me a year to get my first battle rank 100. Awesome. But after that, it's like once you know how to play the game, it's it, a uh, yeah, it goes pretty quick. So, um, I I don't want to say that it's it's out of the question. Awesome. Uh, but I I also don't think that it should be the ASP system that does that sort of thing. I think it'd be and nice to that. just basically do something simple like just to showcase how many times they did it and just have a badge of mm -hmm. stars or a number to represent how many times they flipped it. Um, yeah. That way they know they're the highest flippers of levels or stuff like that. Similar to like what you see in other games, but they don't need be. to have um, quote unquote more weapons and more unlocks. That's just right, ridiculous. Right. Balancing yeah. of that will be m no. It's, it's already annoying. <laughs> Yeah. that's my opinion but um the, the example i said earlier is that something you basically look into if you are interested um it would be like super low priority because we just don't have the need for something like that right now uh, right. it is a desire but awesome. um or from the community but uh yeah just to let you guys I all know it's... guys that these questions are going to be given to rel and their team in the future if they ever want to revisit them they have it guys so you don't need to repeat it 400 times to them or a thousand times that people have been telling me uh, we don't want to waste their time having them read these questions uh, in one month from now or two months from now. So we want them to work and focus on what we just discussed in this channel and my my interview. And of course, with Mukasa's interview, we'll continue moving forward together as a team to think about how we can actually help them grow in Rogue Planet and not waste the majority of their time answering questions that have already been said in interviews. So let's basically try our best to cater to clear concise answers and stuff and you guys are doing fantastic so far uh and sorry for basically majority of the time basically entertaining the whole upper half and now we're going to focus more on the questions and giving relish chance to talk we have the next individual submitted by ksi black glass outfit name y e 5 t effectively ineffective <laughs> sorry uh server emerald us east faction new conglomerate question is the spawn system going to get looked at again by any chance? We would like to revert it back to the old system. Okay, here's a question. Uh, what did the old system do? No Does anybody remember the rules of the old system? What kind of complaints existed around the old system? Yeah, as soon as you take off the rose-colored nostalgia goggles, you can, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, really a, good. You can. Semi, uh... <laughs> I will love this shit of you. I will h you and I'll you yeah just kidding uh right wait, yeah, no, no. Um, <laughs> the, so uh, what it was, yeah, yeah, so help, let's ask this one question because i am super ignorant to this and guys again i can't join january 8th 2020 so you might mm -hmm. think that hey why aren't you asking better questions i asked alphys to ask the damn question and right. so my question is what was the old system like can you summarize it for me okay so uh the way that the old system worked is that it had a very specific kind of obscure rule set you were always able to spawn at the warp gate. You're always able to spawn at um, the closest tower base, the closest facility, and uh, Sunderers within 300 meters or maybe 100 meters. I want to say it was 300. Oh, you know what? It was 1,000. Um, yeah, it was actually 1,000 meters, I think. Um, and then you had reinforcements needed locations, which that system was kind of hit or miss with what spawn system or spawn points it actually gave you the main complaint that existed at, that existed at the time was that players are unable to move around the map unless they spawn hop which is not a problem anymore uh so what you had to do is you would have to redeploy go to a close base one of the the rules that i just said and then redeploy again then go to another close base and then redeploy and then go to the the fight that you're actually going I remember for doing that like if you're times. trying to yep. yeah yeah if you're trying to move across the map Hops, gosh, so like 30 uh, seconds later i'll be there yeah, uh, so that was, but even that was only kind of reserved for people who knew what they were doing um, and they're kind of just really needed to go to certain places. Uh, outside of that, you would spawn like an ESF and then just fly it over there and then bail out and then, you know, bring your squad along with the spawn beacon and that sort of thing. Uh, one of the things that, uh, where did my train of thought go? Uh, we're talking about basically the, the hopscotching and then basically your team spawn beacon. Right. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that this system created is that players would never leave a lane because there was too much friction to actually go anywhere. Like that I just described, you had to redeploy. Like the average player doesn't do that. The average player just stays and they fight. And then when the fight ends, they move down the lattice. So the uh, kind of the interesting thing is that uh, these, when a, when a fight would end, all of the people who were defending would 
have been pushed off, and then they would have no nearby spawn locations, but they would have a reinforcements needed location probably somewhere else on the map. And because of that, you had a Zerg that was basically just this mass of players pushing down a lattice uh, that were uncontested. So like you'd have a good fight. Sometimes, very rarely, those fights would go back and forth, but when a fight would end, typically it'd be that mass of players just pushing down a lattice. And that's not really conducive to good gameplay. Um, and, and that was one of the main complaints at the time. Is awesome. that, so yeah. basically the major complaint was, was that I'm going to basically get to the point one time, respawn, and that's it. And that's what you guys created. Yep. And now you've made a faction balance of the current system where once your population hits over 50%, it stops all spawning for all players. You have to use a spawn beacon to get your members there quicker. Or uh, uh, no, it's it's actually more convoluted than that. Oh, so yeah. yeah so I to to back up. Um, I don't think that this. So I, I think that this current spawn system is better than it was, because players really wanted the ability to move around the map. That has been given to them. However, once a new system was in place, um, one of the issues that. So what we tried to do as developers is move the population around the map, kind of spread things out, because it does a couple of things for us. It A, creates better fights like uh, at uh, different locations on the continent, which can potentially lead to less stagnation. Uh, and then more importantly is that the latency wasn't as bad. So right now you kind of see uh, an issue with like TI alloys, and this did not exist initially. And the reason that it didn't exist initially is because we took a really hard stance on whether or not you could or could not spawn somewhere. Uh, and when a fight was overpopulated, we'd push you to somewhere else, like to either create fights at, uh, at other lanes. But, uh, but the community basically kicked and screamed and said, like, we really want uh, the ability to spawn where we want, like, or I'm sorry, we really want the ability to spawn uh, locally at the same fight or whatever. Uh, and to that end, we loosened a lot of the restrictions that came from it, and they got what they wanted which is uh, TI Allies Forever. But that's not to say that everything uh, that we did design-wise was good because the system was totally, like it was, it was overly complicated. Um, it quite often would not give you spawn locations that you totally think you should have access to. Uh, and then it, uh, yeah, it was just, it was weird in that kind of the, the rules and the bugs were blended together so people couldn't decide like whether or not uh, those bugs and rules actually existed or uh what was a rule and what was a bug rather so yeah uh long story short um i think it's slightly better than it was but totally it's awesome. it's it's kind of a miss for me like the spawn system definitely needs to get reworked and we're yeah we need to do it again this year awesome, awesome. i love that basic answer is really good guys basically this is what he said guys take a chance to revisit it uh when the stream is over you'll get a chance to see all of it let's go to the next question thank you for answering that uh rel I'm going to be a little bit faster, so I'm going to hold much, much of your time. And everybody in this channel is like, we need more rel talking. So let's focus on that. Submitted by Irish Insanity. Oh, I did it right. <laughs> <laughs> Outfit name, VG Validus Gamers. Server, Emerald US East. Faction, Karen Republic. Question. Could we see UI that supports groups of multiple platoons or outfits working together? Would love to be able to see where other platoons are on the map or other outfits that we alliance with. It, it would be nice. Um, there are technical limitations with how many uh, objects you show on the map. Map, or especially like like mini map and main map stuff. The more uh, locations you have to track, very expensive, uh, very performance intensive. So, uh, and then there's the UI element too. Like we, you, having battalions, having companies is, a, I think, is a good idea overall. Um, but I don't think that, like, at the same time, I feel like those platoon leaders kind of are able to coordinate through command chat anyway, and that's kind of been doing pretty well right now. Oh, there's a question coming right after that. I love how you said that. Well said on saying that they have done already, and now I'm about to go to Chef Cut and Dr. Quack. They're going to basically talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to rephrase the, the, the question earlier by Irish Insanity to make sure if we can try this idea instead, because I know it takes a lot of resources and time to spot them all and not majority of them are showing up anyways, it's going to cause the game to be like a not quote unquote what you intended it on to be. Um, so if I ally with let's said platoon leader of another outfit or ally mm -hmm. somehow, I only want right. to see the platoon leader, physical platoon leader location as mm -hmm. we ally only one. And yep. I want this platoon lead to have one 
one group color or whatever the hell it is that he can put a point to say we are attacking here for all of this platoon to mm. see that's it only the leaders can send info to each other no players can see it they are just dedicated to where if that guy puts a waypoint everyone doesn't think they have to go there so it doesn't confuse anything yeah. it's just leader talk between leader talk and that's my opinion um that would make it yeah, so right. legendary as an outfit lead who ran four or five platoons back in 2012 it was with 29,000 players i don't think players. that's a bad idea at all I think that there is definitely something workable there. I've seen that um, in other games, and I know you guys are so freaking good, man. Honestly, the feedback from everybody in the community, I love you all, man. You guys are so smart. Well done, guys. Honestly. And thank you, Ralph, for answering my question. And he's basically going to have that for the future himself. Um, do we want to add any more, or feel like I go to the next question? No, no. I mean, it certainly needs to be designed like uh, that because we're trying to do stuff with uh with waypoint indicators right now like you have offensive and defensive requests uh that you can you can drop so i kind of wonder uh, how global you can make that sort of uh response um because one of the things in planet side one i remember that was the most powerful thing of all time that made me chill in my bones is knowing that i had a team of people that needed me to go in a heart system to jump over to esmir to drop in the middle of nowhere to go and do that reinforcement while i was on amersh I mean, I literally cannot believe we made the difference just because of one call out. We can see where they're located and just so much work was happening across continents mm -hmm. and that lot of structure. I have that personal down below. I'll talk to you about, but that's not the question right now. So he said he's going to work on it. He's going to think about it. Doesn't mean he's going to have the time frame. Thank you, Rel. Is that correct? Right. Uh, I think I will think about it. <laughs> yeah, I will certainly think about think it. About it. Yeah, no, I think it's a good idea. Awesome. I just want to make sure there's nothing here. Quote unquote said he's working on it tomorrow. No, right. just thinking about it. That's all we want, guys. And this is the transparency that you guys asked for. And I don't want to see a single post out there saying Rogue Planet Games is not the most epic freaking game company for Planet Side 2 in 2012. I mean, 2020. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. Submitted by Shefka. Outfit AR3S. The Ares Company. Server Miller. Europe. Faction The Terran Republic has combined their questions with submitted by Dr. Quack. Outfit, the Derp Company, D3RP. Server, Emerald, US East. Faction, the Vanu Sovereignty. First question goes to submitted by Dr. Quack. Are there any plans to allow continuous resource gain from capturing bases to be shared slash split among participating outfits in the capture rather than the winner that takes it all that which breeds a mindset which creates a comp competition inside of a faction we're gonna hold that i'm gonna go to the next part, person and their question and we'll come back to their question so everybody knows all of it before he starts going down this path because chefka has got a ton uh we love this game great work this is from chefka's community uh we and of course everybody i know would love to say that to everybody all the basically outfit leaders that are current and basically about to said all of you guys have said you love them directed to me so you all are getting that together I uh, want to inform you that since the update came out, we have noticed a complete removal of faction support due to the resource farming on bases. Outfits in the same faction are now competing against each other when they were working together before this update. Uh, like on command chat or on outfits, we uh, used to work together on team speak are no longer there. Outfit Wars Alpha 1 qualification phase is coming out soon, March 23rd. Uh, this will separate us, us even further in my opinion, or maybe even get to the point of team killing each other just for base captures. Here's an example of what happens often in my perspective with other outfits talking to me in my server. Um, you cap a base, five minutes later, you defend it. You are two squads, and you have 1.5 platoons of enemies showing up. You call for help on command chat. Before, you had a good opportunity to see that fellow outfit, a faction, come to your aid. But now, just silence. They wait till the base is captured, and then send their reinforcements to retake the base under their name with more numbers than us. What can RPG do to gain faction cooperation again? Uh, it's becoming even more rare to see factions defending each other. Uh, the, 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 it's becoming even more rare since the beginning to see factions defending each other's bastion fleet carriers because of the existing uh, resource system that people are ruining each other over for in the middle or in other bases around it. I know this update just came out and we will need time to work out the kinks just asking if plans are underway. If not, I would just like to spread awareness and we love everything we're seeing in the population increase. So again, Dr. Quack and Mr. Shefka are not complaining here. They just want to basically spread that awareness. Your thoughts. Okay. So this is kind of a fun one because uh, 
Uh, I think everybody had the expectation that this was going to happen, right? I do think that part of that is fueled by the perception that it's happening. So you're like you're you're blaming nobody showing up because you know that this mechanic exists. But that's not to say it doesn't happen. Um, but I have played a lot, and uh, I have I actually haven't seen the behaviors change too much when it comes to like winning alerts. But I, so I kind of wonder how much of this is server culture, uh, and how much of it uh, varies just faction to faction, like the the outfits within those factions. So makes sense. I mean, the Destiny member guys, we already talked about it earlier. Let's alpha. Let the alpha one outfit wars phase go through the way they spend hours and millions of hours, guys, with those players who have done the testing with the uh, with the RPG staff. Let's let alpha one go through, and then we'll sit down and the post overview of it in an interview. And when that gets uh, applied, it could be Andy, it could be Carto, it could be Justin, anybody. It doesn't matter. Uh, we want them to know that we care, and we want them to know that. We have ideas for you that maybe and maybe not you've already thought of. And so even hearing our ideas that you already know a million times over, because I know how it works in my small little company when I actually was working before, I had four or five confidants that would sit there and talk about design for commercial and residential design. And then my client would repeat the same stuff I've already worked out kinks in my head and design wise. And the best thing to do is just let the client speak, even though you know it all. And that's something that I've seen that the client feels a lot more respected by it because they feel like they've been validated, even though they are paying. And so it sucks to have to hear 5,000 questions of the same question. So I'm trying to prevent them from working their butts off to repeat every one person's questions. So that's why these interviews are very powerful. Thank you, interview, uh, Ralph, for stopping by. Um, so, to I, be fair, um, so when you talk about you're referring to the uh, the internal group and the, just the testers who have you know helped us prior, like these um, these were all concerns that we had as a dev team. The players within those groups had as uh, as communities or as a uh, as a group of players rather, and it is something that uh, we as a dev team said like, let's see how far it goes. Like if that relationship becomes toxic. Then, then it's kind of a problem. But right now, we're seeing like a lot of movement around the map. We're seeing a lot of interesting gameplay that that kind of um, that we haven't seen before. A lot of uh, this sort of even like territorial, give me all the the stuff behavior has has brought outfits together so that they work together more often. Like there are upsides too to kind of the the inner politics that's happening right now. So it's important to take that you know all together. Like I, I do think that uh, there's certainly some changes that'll be need to be made uh, over time to to make it so people just can't like that it straight up won't help you uh, which is the the concern right now but there's there's things that we can do to alleviate that like for example uh, right now outfits capturing bases are what give you the resources but we have the ability to make it so like a defensive recapture of the base can uh, give control to that outfit instead so like if my outfit is uh, is defending an allied base, that base becomes mine. Like that's that's a possibility. Uh, it's something that we actually, we readily have access to right now. In fact, I could probably turn it on live right now if I wanted to, but that anyway. Awesome. Uh, so it's, it's something that that exists. So we, we need to see how these behaviors play out, see how prevalent they are. Uh, and then after like people kind of settle into their behaviors, then you'll know uh, how much tuning needs to be done. So I have a question for all of you guys who are listening. As Rel was talking, my brain was tuning in as an outfit leader, as a group of five platoons that I used to run. I was a Zerg fit, I guess, quote unquote. Um, I want to take advantage of the system. I want to show that we're going to make it as bad as it possibly can be. So that way I can show to the developers that it is a bad system. The point I'm trying to make, guys, is the, diff this, the, the conversation we're having is live right now. There's no point to make it a, a, a thing just to show your point. So try the qualification phase, try what it brings naturally, because that's the data that we need. And if you don't like it, we still can talk about it. Doesn't mean you have to actually abuse the system to prove it a point. We've seen that in the community. I've seen that in Reddit. I've seen the culture of what you guys can do to PSA and destroy it via reviews. And we've seen what the culture just did with the Steam reviews. This is the strongest community I've ever been a part of. And I'm looking forward to you guys understanding from my lips the positivity, bruise, trust, and also keeping it family friendly if you have a brand gives you an opportunity to sit down with basically individuals like himself because he cannot represent a brand that is going to brew toxicity because then his brand is linked to it. So 
So if you guys have your own content creation channel, you guys really want to build up your brand, talk to me. I'd love to help you guys to get a chance to have these opportunities one day. But again, thank you guys all for being super respectful and positive in chat. And it means a lot to me to hear that he wants to go through these systems and he's asking you guys, let's try the systems and we'll re-talk again in, in the post interview of what happened to Afro Wars. And I promise you guys, as myself included, I won't let it slide if it's something that all of you hated and you'll all have to dealt with it. So we'll try to work together. And I know those outfit leaders, millions of you out there now are looking forward to talk to me after this to go and focus on what we can do together as a team to give RPG the best experience possible. And so this is our first time that I'm part of this and I'm really new to it. And so I appreciate guys if you don't make me work my butt off, but I will still work until my bone dies or I get no sleep just to make sure you guys are happy. And that's what I've been doing. So thanks Ralph for answering that question. We're going to the next one. Um, the next one is uh, Rants. Here we go. <laughs> Every time I get to start this. Submitted by Rants. Outfit. 95th Scourge Squadron. N95SS. Server. Cobalt Europe. Faction. The Terran Republic. Their question. Over the years, we've heard about this Phase 1 plan. And we would love to know if there's any more news on this story. I believe phase one had something to do with nanite supply for equipment, the construction system, and the lattice reworking. If you're planning to move or already on phase two, what changes may be coming in the future to the lattice structure, lattice system, construction, or nanite supply? Or if you put these on hold for now, we would love to know if possible. Thank you. This update has been a pleasure for all of us. So I think he's he's more specifically talking about the uh, the resource revamp phase two, like as if nanites were the first uh, part of that. Because uh, back in the day, just for for those watching who don't know, I guess uh, I have no idea what there, the first one is. If you can help me yeah, understand it, there were uh, three different resources. You had the aerospace, mechanized, and uh, oh and yes, infantry. I was right, there right. for that. That was really cool. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Why did you so, switch it? I'm just curious. Uh, well, it's not a you guys at this point. Um, just just to be be, <laughs> be clear, like uh, this this happened uh, when I was a player, like well, well, well back. Uh, but, so uh, it wasn't Rel, guys. You heard him. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he just said but it. That, Go ahead. But I do remember what, one of the uh, the issues that uh, that that system created it was uh, a lot of snowballing. So basically, what would happen is that um, I mean, there's a few different downsides. The first is that uh, three different resource types was viewed as confusing for the, the average player, just like what, what goes where. Um, at least that was the mentality at the time, uh, as we heard it from the developers. Uh, I kind of wonder if that's, if that's the case. Um, other things that they were trying to address seemingly was, was snowballing. So how, uh, how resources worked back then is that, uh, A, you could either, the experience that you earned would be given back to you as a resource uh, of the type that was on the region. So like while you're in the region, you earn biological resources or while you, you earn mechanized. However, uh, warp gates would also pulse out these resources to all players based on the amount of territories that you had. So basically the more territories that you had, the more resources that you got um, at the same time. So like- I remember the more like 220 territory... resources and I was like a membership. I was like, <laughs> I was like pulling tanks yeah. like nothing. So uh, fortunately, there there were like vehicle pull timers back then, but those were able to be sorted down through a progression system. Oh. Uh, so it didn't it didn't even matter to some of the people who, uh, yeah, that that cooldowns existed. So eventually, like the whole system just kind of got ripped out. Uh, what players tended to do at the time was that they would rotate through vehicles. So they'd pull all their tanks until they hadn't had no more uh, resources or didn't have any uh, had all cooldowns, and they'd pull all the air vehicles and then they'd pull all the uh, display infantry for a bit, and then they just keep going through that loop. So um, I, I feel like there were some good things and some bad things. But what we did when we approached the, the resource system uh, is try to make it geared toward players who, who already have experience in the game, right? It's not for the average player. It's for the outfits. You know, it's adding a, a layer that's on top of the, the base game. Uh, and I think that's kind of the approach that we should take when it comes to uh, adding any new systems that are meant to... Uh, or that the might be, I guess, viewed as confusing um, to the average player. Just layering in uh, depth. Makes sense. That being said, uh, as far as a phase two thing, anything that the old team was working on prior to uh, actually, yeah, pri yeah, prior to daybreak, 
yeah. like not even prior 2015 to, guys planet. yeah this is gone like that and it's been gone for a while so uh so this uh, idea of phase do, two did you ever call out a phase two i don't know about this uh i i don't yeah i, I don't know if it was ever called a phase two i think it was just kind of phase uh, one was a thing before uh daybreak and then when you guys switched we're just going to say phase one is out the door um that means daybreak games whoever they took it from there and then now rogue planet is here let's ask the question to rogue planet uh, is Rogue Planet interested in, in reworking the lattice structure or focusing on more construction systems or the nanite supply for equipment um, at all? Is that so, your... uh, so it, it would be a, a quick no for me just because... From all three or I... just one each? Uh, well, okay. So let's also with nanite supply system, system for equipment? Okay. Nope. Uh, no. Okay. And then the construction system, you guys want to rework it? I would say so. Okay, and yeah, then we're going to so yes. go with the lattice reworkings. Lattice, no. Okay, um, so the construction But I only say no because more. we don't have plans for those currently. Got it. Uh, that's not to say that they're not a problem. It's not to say that we don't have ideas on what could be. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, so here's a fun little bit about the current outfit war asset system. Uh, we initially started with uh, vehicles. Like, you would craft vehicles. What? All of the vehicles that currently exist in the game. So... Oh, wow. Uh, and there was, so there was two thoughts. The first is that those vehicles would be like, you'd have to stock them up and then that's what you'd take with you to outfit war. And that would be your finite supply. And you just got those vehicles to, to try to win the outfit war. That was, similar, that was similar to Planet Side 1, it feels like it. Oh. Yeah, because the Planet Side 1 had like the one, hardest one. way of bringing a vehicle to battle. Mm. Anyways, go ahead. And then we were thinking uh, that, uh, well, I, I shouldn't even say we, it's more like, like an idea that existed. Uh, if if that were to be the case, right? Uh, creating the vehicles for Outfit Wars, then potentially like we could uh, apply that to the vehicles that existed as a whole. So like the outfits are actually creating the vehicles for, for bases and bases would like have a certain amount of, actually this, I mean, this particular idea goes back to before Combined Arms where um, uh, we're talking about vehicle limitations. And uh, my thought at the time was that um, that each base would have a certain amount of, of vehicles on it. So uh, you would have to to pick up those uh, vehicles from each base and then it'd restock over time. And you could like bring Cordium if you wanted to, to accelerate the, the restocking of the base. But, um, but that was, I mean, there was a lot of systems that surrounded that too. It wasn't just a one and done. If we pulled that off, that system, how much less vehicles we would see or I think a lot less, right? So, so that that was the question, right? Because yeah. we we had to make the decision between players have played this game for a long time now, and a lot of them have specialized their play styles. Like I only play main battle tank, or I only play sky knight, or whatever. Right. So, uh, we had to away. say like, yeah, yeah. Do we want to take it away, or do we want to to uh, kind of even celebrate it, or it's just like, yeah, you get to you can totally play it, you know, uh, as much as you want, and uh there's probably a better solution than what currently exists but i think that uh that nanites were kind of the way to to bridge that gap um and again this happened back when i was a player but since all the resources were then personal and applied to all the vehicles you can do whatever you wanted like it didn't matter which bases you were taking around the map and that sort of thing and i think that's uh kind of what the community laments sometimes is the uh the reason for taking bases is uh it's it's been lessened because of the resources that no longer exist on them I don't necessarily agree with that because I think that given the lattice currently, like you fight where you fight for the most part. A lot of the bases run together and you don't necessarily get to choose all the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, so some of it makes sense for it to have gone away and some of it uh, I don't know, could probably Very be cool. better. Uh, so I'm going to basically add to that. Um, the example of what you just described um, brought this in my brain. Uh, the idea that we want to separate them and give them less feed or more feed infantry game that is really that the current meta to take base points but mm -hmm. the infantry game users are saying is there a chance that we can actually increase the chances of not just getting pot shotted all day by vehicles that can actually yeah. climb mountains or find ways to basically uh, the whole point is this is an example of the question so sunder bays are open and you park and you basically have to go over and as soon as you park somebody pulls a vehicle ends your ends your life if you're a new player, uh, when the populations were small, populations are huge now, so that's not an issue anymore. I know you guys made adjustments for PSA because the populations were small when I played. So you changed mm -hmm. the queue system, which should not have been the case if you had numbers. Um, 
So the idea is, is there a chance that we can actually have a one minute example? This is a suggestion. I don't want to say just, you say no, we pass. Um, there is a core where you just do a generator and you hack into it. One minute later, all the shields will open up on the Sunder parking bays. That means that that team has to defend the Sunder parking bay, also the A point, and that parking bay is right, I mean, the, the shield generator is right next to the spawn room. And that means that they, if you want to get rid of that Sunder, you can't just go pull a vehicle and just have C4 and end their life. You cannot enter that automatic shield unless if you get rid of that one minute generation so that way the timing attack actually has to exist. So you're ready to assist knowing that there's 10 seconds left to go back to your Sunder and now be there to hold point to repair that uh, generator that is meant only for attackers, not for defenders. Um, yeah. Or the other way around. I don't know which I'm talking about. The whole point is that's one example for the shot with that point. Right. A generator to create a sky shield over a base so that mm -hmm. way they know that they can actually go and hack into that sky shield generator very easily and then that shield will go away. Kind of similar to the construction base over main bases. What do you think about that idea? Uh, okay, so we kind of have to balance is is this game actually combined arms or is it infantry farming simulator no no i'm saying like uh, only specific base for infantry some bases are for tanking base right. and then aircraft bases yeah. like skate like 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 was it hassan that has this like beautiful tree zone and it's right next right. to the warp gate oh my god yeah so i think there's a, a balance we had. I, I don't think that the the shields over the base is necessarily a bad idea but also we wanted to put the players or put the power into the hands of the players so things like sky or citadel shield exist to yes, kind that's, of that's uh, what deal you with situations created, like since this. the question so I um, fixed a lot of that yeah 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 i mean but even so like it's it's a valid question like uh parking in center bay is uh people talk quite often about you know there being uh gates you know over the, the vehicle base so that a lightning can't sit you know a, a mile away and then just shell the center until it dies so uh it's not as if we we can't do the thing, these things it's more that uh all the bases in the game are kind of old um I, I, mean, I guess please elaborate on that because I need but, people to know what we talked about personally about how damn hard it is to do these simple things. You and I talked about something simple. I want to find ways to make RPG just find things on the wall that is just a flick of a switch. Mm -hmm. That means that's my goal as a as a um, influencer is just to find things that can be a switch of a switch. If I find out if it takes more than one hour, I don't want to touch it. That's my influence to find ideas that their current systems, we want to do a flick of a switch. What are your thoughts about that, uh, Rel? Is that what you guys are aiming to do, or? Oh yeah, well, any anytime we can get uh, easy wins is good for us. Like, because time is probably the most uh, valuable commodity we have. So, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take any any ideas that that make sense, but also at the same time, like has to has to be prioritized. Uh, and I think it always it always comes down to priorities. Awesome. Yeah. And so we heard everybody about phase one, phase two examples. That's no longer here. That was from the uh, SOE to Daybreak. Yep. And they will have a new information out there for you. Uh, hopefully uh, in the basically next month or two, let them focus guys on the update and let them polish it as much as they possibly can. We know there's issues out there and they're getting all those issues basically grinded out. We'll go to the so next my question. request, just real quick, is uh, instead of... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is instead of... Uh... <laughs> Instead of thinking about the past, like there's, you know, uh, can it go back to the being this way? Can we, I mean, there's just so many questions that are talk about, you know, systems or features or whatever that used to be. Think about what should change now to get the game to a place where you'd, you'd like to see in the future. That's, that's really the thinking that you should have. Awesome. Well said. Yeah. If you guys heard him, guys, um, go back in the video. There's something very important for you guys to know as a community. If you want to repeat that one more time to clarify it for everybody so that way they know how important that's a developer asking the community for something. Say it again. <laughs> just clip the replay and then play it over. There we um, go. <laughs> you know, just just think about moving forward instead of you know phrasing all the the questions uh, in kind of the, the past sense. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. Basically, let's focus on when they showed up and what we're currently working with. The previous systems that were from other developers and other groups. I know a lot of them are probably still on the team. Let's just focus on what Daybreak Games said. I know. What Rogue Planet Games said with Andy and that quote where they own Planetside's franchise and everything moving forward. Let's focus on what they said about transparency. He's literally still here. And all of that, guys. Honestly, I love these guys. I love everyone in Rogue Planet. They have been a huge gem to us in this group. And I hope all you content creators actually spread awareness. Let's let them know how much they mean to us. Uh, let's go to the next question. 
I didn't realize we've been going for almost two hours. I know, I noticed that right now. <laughs> these people are basically doing off time. Like, I gotta finish these last questions quick. Submitted by Ding Bada. Outfit name, TLFT, The Lost Frontier, Server, Connery, US West, Faction, The Terran Republic. Their question. If you guys want to know all these questions, these are the outfit spotlights of all the outfits that I had a chance to outfit spotlight. That's a lot of outfits. And you guys all deserve my time. And thank you guys for giving me a chance to outfit spotlight you. Their question. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> are you serious? Okay. Some of our tactics backfire so greatly that we, quote unquote, accidentally wipe our own platoon on a daily. Would there ever be a possibility of a system that allows for team kills to be forgiven somehow? Or uh, it's, less intense? It's something that's been requested a fair amount. Um, I mean, it's always possible, but man, that is just so low on the priority list. Like it's, yeah, stop killing your teammates. Well said. Be careful with the orbital strikes. <laughs> just... It's insane how quickly they just get the lock on their weapons. So if there's a oh, way no. to... <laughs> Dink Bada had to basically blow up half his team to take out the Bastion fl uh, flight mm. carrier and just couldn't do anything anymore. Yeah, I, I kind of wonder if we could um, kind of dampen the grief if you're like in the same squad or something like that. That that might be more more feasible than... That is the most epic system. thing to do if they're in the same squad so we can kick them out and it starts counting it. So that's actually genius. Can we write that down? Hold on. Uh, can, Tajir, can you write that down for me whenever you get a chance? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> uh, awesome. Thank you, Ralph, for that. That's that was actually probably the number one thing. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Well done. Um, next question. Submitted by the World Doll. Outfit, FTOT, Foxtrots, Server, Genudine PS4. Faction, New Conglomerate. Question. Can you let right? elaborate on how the ranking systems will be in ps4 how many ranks will be available max is it going to be the same thing that they wait for for escalation to get that update uh yeah i would say so okay um it, it makes good. sense for all all that con content to go at the same time sounds good yeah we'll go move next thank you if you guys heard that question uh, there's nothing else to elaborate on we talked about it all earlier submitted by nikon 17 one of my moderators Thank you so much, Nikon, for basically helping me out for all the times that I needed. Outfit name, FIFA. They play soccer and they're legend at it. Just kidding, no. FIFA stands for the Iron Forge Alliance. F-E is iron on the PRX table. Server, Connery US West. Faction, New Conglomerate. Their question. In the face of increased populations, the dreaded Q has proven a major roadblock for outfits in getting their members together and organizing on a single continent for ops. What if... Anything is being considered to make it easier for outfits to keep members together. Can we perhaps see a system where platoon leaders can deploy their entire platoons of selected warp gates at once, or some sort of platoon or group queue? Notes. We have found that our players are logging off when they see that they cannot get on the same continent as the outfits, uh, or maybe sometimes any continent at all, because the queues are hitting incredibly high. Quality of life additions, if possible. Integrations of API population numbers to UI. I'll just hold that. We'll just stop. We'll just focus on the top question. What if yeah, they're? Um, um, yeah, go ahead. So uh, we did make some adjustments to the queue because it was, <clears throat> it was, it was very, very strict, uh, and it was originally tuned. And this is uh, it's got fixed an es escalation, though. Like you're still seeing queues just because there's a lot of people right now. So thirteen thousand. Um, yeah, it was. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, thirteen thousand that will confirm later. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the fact check. Um, Where's the fact checkers? God. Uh, yeah, so it was it was tuned around small populations, but uh, we did loosen up on that uh, a fair amount. So hopefully it still it's hasn't a little been bit solved. Better. I mean, but yeah, no, I mean, group, I honestly, like we just we don't have enough play space to accommodate all these players, and also these server like uh, server caps are like we we don't want to put more players on the server right now, like on each zone, like on Endar, on Azimir, whatever, like, cause it's a lot of players and it creates issues. So, uh, right. We're just, we're doing what we can, you know? Awesome. And so to, I heard something about the servers getting something on the 18th. Is that correct? Or is that something I just basically made uh, up? Is that, I no, no. Andy it's, said something on the tweet says he's getting pushed. some new servers out. I don't know what the hell that means. Yeah, so uh, all of the servers received upgrades, hardware upgrades, 
Um, yeah, I didn't. For... I didn't lie, guys. I read it somewhere. My brain basically had a dream right. about it. Well done, Andy. Yeah. Well done. So they they all received uh, upgrades except for Emerald. Emerald's the last one, uh, and this has been pushed back because of you know all the issues with uh, the pandemic right now. So I hope you guys are safe out there. I'm not joking. Thanks. Guys. Yeah. No. I mean, we're we're taking all of our precautions, so uh, we're we're doing everything that we can. Awesome. Um, I mean, I'm not joking, man. I honestly would love to help you if I can, but please be safe. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. it sucks. Um, um, oh. Yeah, so I, I think maybe Andy put out something about it, but uh, if, if you didn't, um, we're still just kind of waiting for information. Makes sense. Yeah. So let's go to the next part. He says that we found that our players are logging off, so then I guess, I guess we can't really solve that until they figure out more about um, more servers or some, like, say, some other I way mean, to basically move. If even if we uh we have, oh there's another one this is at the moment membership is not a solution for those who have it they've all signed up in their group they're spreading awareness i understand the excitement behind the amount of players who recently joined ps2 11,000 is the mark that we know about no we changed that to 13,000 so yeah i mean guys don't complain about this basically queue being a pain in the butt guys they have to see if this is going to be a thing is this going to continuously I mean, be a thing or is yeah. this going to be like plateauing again it's so, so i think uh I think our outlook is it would kind of be surprised if it continued to uh, cause the same level of issues that it has been causing because after updates, people tend to drop off. That's just kind of the way of things. Um, we do obviously want to sustain those players, but if they're getting turned off by the queues and uh, losing, poor performance or, or whatever, like, yeah, we'll, we'll be losing people. Um, one of the things that we tried to do for this weekend and uh, uh, was enable instances of cold tier. To, uh, to accommodate uh, players or groups of players. But unfortunately, that uh, turned out to be a little bit more annoying than it probably should be. So we want to invest some real code time in uh, and uh, and try to to get that done for another update. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I hope you basically understand the question, man, that they know about the queue issues and they're going to try working on their end uh, examples. Um, it's very expensive. I'm going to assume this and I'm going to ask Ralph for a question. It's very expensive to basically gain a new server just right away just because they're making money right now as a temporary faction. What does a contract look like for basically pushing a server? Can you just sign up for a one-month contract on that? Can you do a one-year contract or is it like a three-year process? I'm totally not the right person to ask. I, <laughs> just want you know, I just want you guys to understand that. Uh, they can't just basically get another server up there to get new players to join that server because it's not as easy as one, two, three. So if those guys who know about that question, please give us some more intel about how the contract system works, not by the pricing, but the duration of it. So that means you can't just go and make another server randomly just because players are here. I know- Yeah, I mean, if we had additional hardware, uh, which I, because this has come up in our conversations as well, because obviously this is as much a problem for us as it is for you guys. So uh, if we had additional hardware, it would be possible to, to turn on a, another server, but then you have to ask like, okay, well, how long is this population going to sustain for? Like, is it, uh, is it worth like the financial investment or you know, you gotta, right. you gotta, it's and, uh, and those hard. questions are all kind of above my pay grade. So, yeah. um, thank you for that. That's, that's all we need to know. It's that way. I want you guys to know, don't go to Ralph for those questions and actually don't go to Ralph at all. Um, no, because no, he doesn't all. want that personally. This is basically the places <laughs> where, uh, he's told me that he would be willing to show up because it has a space for him to actually speak about. And so, guys, thank you guys so much for not wasting his time. Let's go to the community manager. Let's go to our content creators out there. Ask our content creators who have direct access to people like Justin Goldenbach and let them try to receive the questions and cater the questions back to their communities and work with you guys. My community is here for you. I will do whatever I can to answer the question and summarize it and give you all the attention you need as much as I possibly can. You always know that I've responded to every DM when I get off stream. I can't touch the damn stream button because if I touch any Discord things, the entire thing collapses on the windows. So I apologize for you guys not touching the damn DMs because I couldn't find a solution to Discord uh, voice chat. All right, submitted by next question. Let's get through this. I have a couple more questions left. Submitted by Adele the Cadi. Outfit, DGIA. Army of the Dim Giant. Server, Connery, US West. Faction, the new conglomerate. Their question. How do we hear the works of bringing back alert awards? And this is my opinion. It's going to be impossible, but let's hear your opinion. Is there a way to retro retroactively pay players, factions, their alert awards like certs and ISO 4 from the times they've played and conquered after the update, similar to those who entered the PTS server and got their helmets? 
there uh i know i'm just saying it, no it, it would be a nightmare to do that honestly <laughs> yeah. and you know what okay here's my personal stance it's uh -oh. not going to be one that sits well with the community is that is that honestly like you you have been enjoying your time in the game right with the increased populations and everything else uh getting the reward from the end of the alert just given how many alerts have been triggered like it's i don't i'm not sure it's a huge loss there's just been non-stop action since the game is uh since escalation went out so how does iso get yeah. awarded i just don't know just tell me uh yeah so iso <clears throat> is given through alert rewards uh primarily and remember that just back in the day it was a about a five hour rotation for for continents in order to to get the uh that iso payout at the end well i guess there was there was uh, some mid-continent alerts too which gave you a little bit here or there but uh but the main way to get iso is by using certs to buy implant packs to then break down the duplicates and that's what gets you the majority of the iso with the constant meltdown alerts happening right now you're getting 25 percent bonus experience uh just by participating and since they're on every continent pretty much all the time just by playing, you're getting a permanent 25% bonus. Uh, increase. That's just how it's worked out since Escalation. So uh, so the third game is much better, uh, and not to mention we were running double experience at the same time. So you've gotten a lot. <laughs> you've gotten a lot of stuff uh, since Escalation. Um, if we could retroactively re grant the rewards, uh, we totally would. But That would be a nightmare. It is ex it's, yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah. It really is. Just, uh, is it going to come back? How about that question? Oh yeah, no, it's already back. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I didn't as of uh, yesterday's hotfix, I think. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I think. Thank you. That's all I need because I haven't been able to play the damn game for how much work I've been putting mm -hmm. for the interview and all the questions I had to deal yeah. with outfits. I haven't played Planet Side Two since this happened. Okay. So, anyways, uh, I'm having a great <laughs> time. By the way, uh, let's continue. Submitted by Valorous Bob. Outfit name: You Bad. His name is Dot Bads. You're such a bad boy. Uh, server Miller Europe. Faction Bono Sovereignty. Their question: It's still too common for a fight to be decided by one side by simply having way more people. This is a, a suggestion. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd like to know your opinion. Um, debuffing factions similar to other MMOs games. If the population doubles, occurring on a hex, increasing spawn times, or less nanite gain, or both to help tip the balance from overpopulating bases. Are there any systems in the works or thoughts that you may have that could help uh, be helpful to hear on that matter? So uh, Bob, I think wasn't playing uh, back when the spawn system was revamped. So with that being said, uh, he probably didn't see the overwhelmingly negative response that came from uh, from the, the system as it was, which was intended to to prevent zerging and, and deal with that, that overpopping, that sort of thing. Uh, and it was very effective uh, until we had to make the concessions that made it more uh, palatable for the community at large. So, uh, but um, currently, actually, you do get decreased spawn times, which is something that does pop up as a complaint, um, uh, or rather, uh, you get longer spawn times uh, if you if your faction is overpopulated, and that does pop up as a complaint from time to time still. Um, but that's kind of one that we're we're willing to to live with. As far as debuffing like nanite gain, I don't think it'd be super helpful. Um, and that there's like potentially some other stuff that that you could do, but again, it probably it's, not super uh, helpful. It's something like spawn times or um doubling it or something like that can actually be effective to where a large office showed up in a, in a half of the group finds a way to win two and one it makes it equalized because the population is overburdening it and making that sex for that faction become double spawn to help with po over pop attacks so that way you split your team on purpose to have the same so it shows like a negative sign like you're too much on this population you're now spawned at 12 times two the two xx is on or something right so so right now we um I think the current spawn times, and I'm sure somebody will correct me, maybe, uh, are 10 seconds for like a, a decent fight, but uh, usually that's that's already up by the time you have uh, you've gone back to the map screen and you can click and, and then go again. But I thought it was uh, like around 15 seconds for after you spawn to a new hex. So I mean, it's 10 seconds to redeploy, 15 seconds to click on like a router or something like that. No, no, I'm talking time. about when you die, like Got when it. you die in the same same region. Okay. Um, but if that region is overpopulated, I think it's 20 seconds spawn time. Okay. Uh, I could be wrong, but doesn't matter. But this is 
yeah, so this system sort of exists and we still sort of get complaints about it. So it's walking a fine line. Uh, if we want to do more more harsh uh, changes, like again, it, it comes back from like, we do need to redo the spawn system. Uh, it, it needs some love. It needs to be re rethought probably from the ground up. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, I hope that answered your question, uh, Bob. And uh, we're going to go next time. We have about five more questions left. And we're going to go try to get to the audience next uh, after we get a chance to ask basically a quick question. And let's go to the next. Submitted by VTS. Outfit name TG Tactical Gamer. Server Emerald US East. Faction New Conglomerate. Their question. Our outfit love our outfit love to move around using the vehicle system over redeploy. Is there any way to make this more beneficial to players like us? Or do we feel like the current repeat redeploy systems are what you're aiming in today's meta? Thank you for such an in-depth game. We love what you guys are doing in RBG and any info is important to us. I'm kind of unclear what he's asking here. Like so he, basically uh, if you bring vehicles. To use vehicles to, to move around? Yeah, he wants basically the uh, vehicle redeploy um, vehicle si uh, system side, like basically bringing Sunders and that slow moving uh, is not mm. really going to basically be that effective and set, instead of redeploy side. Right. Uh, so that's that's valid. Again, it comes back to the, the spawn like system. Like a mossy a... drop, the spawn beacon, router deployment. And it's like GG, everything goes gets in there very quickly. Yeah, I mean, but at least that takes, that takes effort. Um, yeah, at least for the, the one person. Play. Yeah, but yeah, there's a there's kind of a schism with within the community, and this has existed since the game's uh, entirety. Is that some of the players want uh, Planet Set Two to, to function more like Arma, and then some of the players want Planet Set Two to function more like Battlefield or Planet Set One? That, to be honest, that's uh, just yeah, yeah, it's not possible. Uh, so right, yeah, that's probably a better example. Yeah. But uh, one is much more slow paced. Uh, right now, Planet Set Two is pretty quickly paced, but I, I think that. Uh, Actually, the, the spawn system was a kind of a proponent to this, kind of accelerated things a little bit more than it probably should have. So we we just need to find a, a good balance there to where logistics makes sense. You know, and maybe that's just like you just want more combined arms objectives. Like maybe that's that's where uh, logistics plays the the greatest role. Makes sense. Uh, I see a lot of you guys are talking in chat, and you guys have a lot of good ideas. I will stop by after we have finished with Rel. To let you all know my opinions of what you're discussing because i can debunk a lot of those by myself we don't need to basically ask those questions but you guys have great thoughts i love your opinions keep the mind rolling keep that hamster spinning because you guys are the reason why we have these questions to these individuals tonight next question submitted by warbird td outfit merc mercenaries server connery us west Faction, the Terran Republic. Outfit, question. Our outfit has had an overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive response to Escalation. The game feels completely rejuvenated. Is it possible to share any additional or outfit-oriented changes coming in the future? Hmm. Uh, let's see. So we've talked a little bit about alliances, but there's no plans to implement it right now. Um, the the outfit log is probably something that'll be helpful with people uh, tracking, like when uh, where assets start crafting or are used, or uh, you, your outfit captures a base and that sort of thing. Um, we let's see, and then there's, there's more war assets on the way. That's, that's something that'll be uh, helpful for outfits. And let's see. Beyond that, we kind of we want to make sure not to oversaturate in such a compressed time span. Mm. But um, yeah, I think the, at this point we want to mostly start focusing on quality of life stuff, uh, awesome. as far as outfits are concerned. Very cool. Um, so quality of life stuff right now for outfits are concerned is to patch the existing stuff that we have provided and make sure it's more effective. Correct. Right now we don't want to add something uh, completely new. Uh, no, no, I would, I would say just like polish what currently polish. exists. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you guys heard him, uh, feel free to come to me guys afterwards to identify what things you guys are actually can think about. That'd be beneficial for all outfits. So uh, we can think if it's a switch, we'll go have that post interview next time with them in the future. Uh, okay. Next one. We're going to basically try to get through this. Now I have my one, two questions. We'll just say no, yes, no on my questions, but I want to give these guys the energy because they spend thousands of members to get one question. And they've okay. saved so much. Right. 
Submitted by Hybridius. Hybridius. Sorry, I'm so much. Hybrid, I love you, man. Outfit. TWC2. The Wild Card. Server Connery US West. Faction. The Vaughn of Sovereignty. Their question. Some members would like to reward or help certain players in various ways. Will there be a way to gift? I think Pal Tiger also said that as well. I think at other outfits that I can think of, like almost like seven or eight outfits have told me about this. Their members have told me about this. So I just want to make sure it's not just hybrid. A lot of people are voicing it. Will there be a way to gift Daybreak Cash or shirts to our friends, new players in the future, similar to other MMOs where we can give high quality, low level equipment that we've grinded for and over to them so they can have a good power leveling experience faster than normal and feel loved by, hey, you joined us. And um, what can I have to say? Uh, it's no plans, but something that has been talked about a lot. Uh, it's always kind of tricky, especially when you're gifting uh, uh, Daybreak Cash and that sort of thing. Um, I, I do think that there's probably some design solutions that we can do to have to help players maybe gift certain types of, of things to one another. But uh, again, it's kind of it's low on our, our priority list. And it's always kind of a difficult uh, subject. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, I like how this individual says, hey, you need daybreak cards in stores again. <laughs> 2020, guys. I don't know if that's going to be a thing. Is that is that a thing still? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I, um, I think the old ones that you have still work. So, I mean. Oh, I guess know, I can. Oh, a that's, a, that's a way to create gift cards. You mm. buy over there and you can hand oh. it to them. That's yeah. a genius. That makes sense. I just, I just yeah. completely blanked out. That makes sense. That means their guests can collect it as a community and actually hand. That's what I used to do back in my office. I forgot about that. Yeah. Think yeah. about if you guys can find a way to get codes instead of yeah, the I, actual daybreak cash. I don't know cash. what that, what that means for us nowadays. Just get the yeah, code. Yeah, yeah. And then, then we can actually implement yeah. the code and gain, gain it ourselves. We can pay for it. We just get the code and we can just right. pass codes to people instead of have the yeah, physical merchandise yeah. and make money I, go away. I don't know why it. those went offline. I don't know why, yeah. like, if they were just too expensive to make. I can't imagine. So, Andy, but... can you get back on that again, man? How, how many times do I have to tell you? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> right. I yeah, just, no, I it's, it's something to think about, though. Like, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know why they went away. Oh, it makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, that's a good way of basically uh, introducing gifting from person to person. Yeah. Versus them spending the money out of their pocket and not be able to get their account info or something like that for it. Um, okay, next question. Oh, this is the next part of their question. Uh, what can outfits do to help with a new player experience? And um, I was basically going to answer that personally, but I'd like to hear Raul's opinion. Wait, sorry. Say it what again. Al what, what can, can outfits, outfits do? do to help with oh, a okay. new player experience? Yeah, uh, I would say just try to... Like you can usually notice a new player by the way that they're walking or or whatever, just like send them a squad invite or take the, the vehicle and like drive it kind of close, but please don't run them over so that they can gun for a vehicle. That's super helpful for new players because they feel like they're doing something and they're not dying, you know, just from a straight bullet or whatever. Uh, I, I think, yeah, just the, the more like sort of communication and then also using proxy chat for those those players too. Uh, trying to speak to them. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to uh, like respond, but I, I don't know, just try to just try to babysit <laughs> the new players. One of the things I've noticed from this community is that I told them between one battle rank level one to 15, that's a quick way of identifying a new player. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys get a chance to see someone you shot or somebody you just ran over or you see this individual that is walking, not sprinting, Giving them a single minute of your time by typing to them and letting them know, hey, uh, we have an outfit. We have a space for you. Is there any questions you have about this game? Gives them an opportunity to talk to their friends. And what you guys have done for other streamers, and I've seen it with, uh, with all those streamers who are coming in and you guys are spreading the love to them. They're actually helping bring in their communities in and feeling more comfortable getting shot in the face by you because now they know why. Because the reason why they leave is because they don't know why. They don't know how to counter it. They're just getting blown up by something, c would by something. Someone's stabbing him in the neck. And they're like, oh, my God. It's like, what's happening? The point is I'm trying to make is teach them a little bit, and it will go a long way from players. This is a community-driven game. You already all know that. You saw what happened with 93% on the freaking positive reviews. You saw what happened when we all get together and focus on positivity and respect. So that's my answer to you is that we've been doing a great job, and we continue doing it until we have a real new player experience in development in the future so that way we don't have to spend so much of our energy um now my question is going to rel um is there a new player experience in the works and can we get involved in giving you criticism on it 
Uh, new player experience in the works. Kind of, sort of. Uh, it's something that we've begun planning for now that we have you know, more design resources or more resources in general. Uh, can you help us in it? I think the what will be best in that regard is seeing what we produce and then giving the feedback afterwards. Well done. Well said. Yeah. Okay. So you guys heard him. He's basically doing the same thing with Alpha Wars, Alpha One, and giving us an opportunity to all of us basically turn into landscape architects or turn into architectural designers so we can actually feel like, hey, I just came into this person's door. Holy crap, there's like trash everywhere in the house. That's not a great experience. So, you know. That's the current tutorial. <laughs> right? I'm just giving an example as my, my job. But I'm saying we're going to give them a cool experience. Hopefully we can actually see the, uh, that is current the experience right now. Uh, it doesn't help them understand uh, redeployment side. It doesn't help them find a base. It doesn't help them understand the waypoints or how to even physically find your friends. So the biggest thing that I need as a streamer is the new player to click on my name and turn me into a favorite. Make my name highlighted like a golden highlight name for him so that way he said i want to follow him so he can look at all the names and find my name every time and it's like hmm. a, that's what i need as a streamer because i literally want them all to know where i'm at just follow the golden light name that's all i need but again i don't know how freaking easy that is um anyways, i don't know how many streamers also feel the same way but i've seen you stream the game and none of your guys can find you and this sucks but again that's what's currently what we're facing um okay next question Submitted by Shades and you madman. Thank you, you madman and Shades for pushing Reddit in the very beginning to work with Dr. Money Pants to make the 93% happen, man. I know you were one of those individuals who asked me for that video to be produced. Outfit, B-Way. Outfit, L-Way. They have two outfits called the Bushido Way and Learning the Way of the Bushido Way. Server, Emerald, US East. Faction, the Vaughn of Sovereignty, their question. With the server pops growing to threefold, super exciting, by the way, many of the long-time uh, established outfits, such as ourselves, have been overtaxed absorbing new talent. Do you have any plans to encourage the creation of new outfits with all these new players finding the game for the first time? We are feeling like the new player retention in, from the community as a whole, pre-existing outfits, will drop very soon because outfits can no longer take any new members do the amount of work required to help them. For example, B-Way and most of our referenced outfits have been reducing and restricting admissions in order to cope with the growth and prevent their teams entering a condition of unrest due to rapid culture changes within the existing outfit. Hmm. Your thoughts? That's that's a really <laughs> that's a really good point. Uh, let's see. I haven't heard about outfits. Uh, you know having an issue uh having too many new players so this this is a, a really kind of enlightening uh perspective to take on um let's see you want to basically um uh you want me to rephrase you know the question no no no. i what i would like shades to do is give me his ideas on on how he would address this issue because it's something that <laughs> it's some, it's something that um that we don't we don't think about uh in terms of like having those outfits uh kind of uh, cultivate those new players we kind of just expect that that they do that and those outfits are like grateful to have new players um and then we just kind of hope that uh it's not the zerg fits that are hoovering up the new players <laughs> so uh yeah yeah no i i would like to to hear uh his ideas awesome okay yeah and uh i'm at, i have the next one and this is the last question from outfits and then I have my personal questions, but we can always skip it. I don't mind basically doing it another time, but I think it's important for the sanctuary information that I have. If you want to basically do another time, I don't mind. I know we've been holding this way too long. But thank you, Rel, for literally sticking by. You're an amazing gentleman. Um, I know you have a very big work schedule, but the reasons why I think it's super important, in my opinion, is that these outfits spend so much time amongst their members of thousands of members that we've just discussed throughout each outfit. Almost probably half the server that I just basically identified they work together with their members to create these one questions and it's really mm -hmm. amazing to see their channels working together and i was able to see that for the unrested time of three hours of sleep to be able to do this interview and i love you all for making it easier for these developers and rel you are making it so much you're making it a lot easier for all of us in the community to know that there is a new team here and you guys do care i appreciate that 
that's that's the goal and yeah yeah you know the queue <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> <laughs> submitted by sale 914 outfit name the last question recursion server connery us west faction the new conglomerate their question with exhalation the focus has been outfits but outfits are very dispersed in practice which seems to embrace which seems to embrace by developers even providing an other classification on the outfit browser from a developer standpoint how would you design an outfit what specific outfit behaviors create positive impact to your game hmm I'm not sure what the uh, what the bit about other uh, was. We'll like, give him uh, a minute to think about that. No, no, no I mean, just kidding. For, for, I'll put in the music right now. The, the question. <laughs> the uh, so my the, question, uh, the other tab. This is what I remember. Um, I just asked uh, Seth Sale a question yeah. to just clarify it for me because I didn't know either. Uh, he means that there's an actual tab that says infantry focus, uh, vehicle focus, aircraft right. focus, and then there's the and other tabs. Items. Um, yeah, sorry, combined arms. Um, thanks for clarifying that. I didn't know. Uh, the other tab, what is the idea of the other tab in your opinion? Oh, probably like the role playing, uh, yeah, those sorts of, of outfits. Uh, we probably should have a section there for construction since that's a very specific niche that people tend to participate in. Um, is there an opportunity to have, um, titles typed in their own versus it being specific to, um, to whatever you guys selected? Is there a chance that they can customize their own under other? Uh, well. Because they can customize their own name and outfit anyways. Right, well, they also add a description to those. those I'm saying like uh, the, uh, the well. that way they can search for like, oh, you're right, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. And then it would be never being searched. Because the, right. the search is a filter, right? Yeah. yeah. Can we get a chance to suggest to you in the future uh, other names that we all can come up with as a community? Uh, sure. Okay, thank yeah. you. That's all I need. Yeah, if that makes sense. I mean, but just realize that the more you dilute that pool, the or rather add add to the list, like the more difficult it's going to be for people to. I'll remember find that. Outfits. I'll remember that personally, yeah. and I will basically keep it amongst like less than ten to make sure that it specif specifies each person's style. So that way, there's a tab that says new players outfits. That way, if somebody actually changed their outfit, new player. We'll talk about that in a second with all the other players. That way, they know how to change mm -hmm. their naming. So that way, they can get an outfit that wants the new players, yeah. an outfit that wants veteran players. You know, like at least the ranking to help with that. And then they yeah, could yeah. say combine arms, um, things like that. Of course. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. Uh, what um, was the other part of the question? Uh, what kind of behaviors? Right. Yes. So uh, that outfits can do to, to cultivate a, a, a better. Oh, wait. Uh, it I mean, says, it's, it's um, kind of similar to... what specific outfits behaviors create positive impacts to your game? Yeah. Any. So there. some outfits are uh, like their, their chats only on TeamSpeak or they, they only like play in the vicinity of one another like they'll, they'll drop on a point and then they'll just you know farm people or whatever uh, those sorts of outfits aren't super conducive to the average new player uh, and it's, it's more for like uh, for players who like that sort of play style already in which case they don't necessarily need the guidance um, but for new players outfits who are more strategic so they they do kind of the uh, the call outs on on which bases to take and they 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 tell people to like you know go full galaxies or redeploy now and that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's kind of it's interesting because uh, there's a subset of the community that frowns on that type of more uh, referred to as Milson behavior, but that's kind of the planet side experience as it's perceived to uh, new players. They want to engage with that fantasy, uh, and it also gives players a good foundation for uh, for players to grow off of or grow from later. Uh, yeah, so any sort of like outfit leading, like actual leading, um, and I think the combined arms play helps get people accustomed to the game, and and it really just it adds to like all the hype that you see, and uh, just kind of creates those really glorious moments that people record. So, so what I'm yeah. hearing is a uh, majority of the outfits out there are probably doing what you expect them to do. Yes. To, okay. Yep. So that basically, there's nothing newer that you want to see sort of from personally from your point of view. Is there anything new that yeah. you want to see from them? Um, no, I, I think the uh, you probably just want to take a step back from the people who are just inviting random players nonstop and then never giving them any information. 
So like the outfits that have, you know, thousands of players, you know, maybe there's not enough attention being paid to the individual at that point. Uh, so if, I mean, honestly, it'd be great if those, those members would, uh, or if the, uh, the outfit members would kind of break off and hopefully we see some of that stuff start to happen in the future. But, um, I think for the most part, the outfits are kind of engaging in the behaviors that we like to see, which is probably uh, no small part to uh, to why retention gets so much better when players join outfits. Makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. This one, guys, we just went through all of the outfit questions. Those were all submitted within the 24-hour period that I opened it up to all outfits that are wondering how the hell did they get this question. The reason why they got this question is because I reached out through Planicide's Discord. I reached out to all of my channels to tell everyone and all the outfits you guys know to, hey, ask this question in a specific channel on my Discord. If you guys are not part of my Discord and you want to get involved like this again, feel free to go into my Discord and be ready for those announcements. And so I did come on stream live to ask you guys personally and use this video to teach other outfit leaders to go and post. A lot of outfits came out and a lot of us just, uh, basically got a chance to have their voice be heard. Uh, so thank you all for who catered your question down to one because it's very important to get the right ones out there. There's a lot of questions that are already out there on the news. And so thank you, Ralph, for basically answering all those um, outfit locations. I'm going to ask you if you would like to basically do a speed run of the Planetside 2 Sanctuary ideas that we discussed uh, on a private time. And that way they can always know about what we're, what you're thinking about in Sanctuary. And that way we can get that finished. Or you want to wait that for Alan Lepidus, who is the environmental lead of Rogue Planet Games, gamer, artist, Prophet, Siberian bear wrestler, and Ukrainian <laughs> mob boss. Holy, uh, run, yeah. everyone! <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we should we should probably go over it in, in person. I, I went through the list, and most of it's design related. So awesome. Yeah. So we'll basically end it right here. Uh, oh, you mean I mean, I mean person right now? No. Oh, thank you. No. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say in person no, means in person. Okay. No, no yeah. problem. We'll see in six. I'll see in six months. <laughs> Just kidding. <Yeah. laughs> Just kidding. I know it sucks. Yeah. All right, man. Everybody, listen up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and basically give three lucky winners a chance to ask a question, and I'm gonna open it up in a countdown. When I come back from that countdown, I'm gonna give three lucky winners a chance to ask a direct question to Rel, and then we're ending that stream. So, the people in chat were so damn respectful. Uh, we're gonna do a, basically a break on here for the BR back sign, and Rel has the opportunity to pass. So, thank you for question, and it will be given the moment I undo the screen. I will see who basically posted in that chat. So we're going to go be right back and I'm going to bring it back in less than one minute. So have your questions, actually have your questions in less than basically three minutes. Here's a bear back. All people in chat has a chance to ask for out. You have three lucky winners with a question. Thank you guys. And let's go ahead and do the beer back and give you guys time to think about your question. The only way I'm going to respond to that question is that RCTV. That's why I know it's a question directed at me. That's the symbol at RCTV that needs to be in front of your question. I'm sorry if you don't do it right. But this is the only way I can get it done. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you in the best three minutes. So sorry about that.
I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. There we go. We're going to see who our three winners are. Right under the good luck. We've got Rapid with one. We've got... It looks like you said already with one. Is there anybody else saying at RCTV below where I typed? It looks like we only have one question for Ralph. It looks like nobody else wants to ask a question. Make sure you guys copy and paste your answers. There's the second one. And the third one. There we go. We're done. The questions are going to be from these three individuals. I'm going to copy and paste them. And give him to Morel personally, so that way he actually can see him as well. The winners are Rapid Relief. We've got Epic Dude and Unit 2020. <laughs> so you got to be uh, quick on the trigger for those, huh? That's ex exactly. The press enter on time, and it's right after I typed. And I see at RCTV from Rapid. I see at RCT from Epic Dude. And I see at RCT from Unit 2020. And thank you guys for actually trying this out. This was a freaking hectic to come back in. And I did not know what the best way to do it is. And I think I after know, I typed, so was the best way. Um, okay, so let's go with some uh, rapid relief. Uh, sick high five. Can you now kiss me through the... Fuck? What the... F you know what? I will do it. Mwah! I love you, Rapid. <laughs> That's from me. Don't ask this guy to do it. I'm the extrovert. What are you doing? Uh, would you like to say pass or you want to do it? What? No, no, no. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rapid. <laughs> That's... Next question, uh, uh, Epic yeah. Dude Zero Zero. What's up with implants? <laughs> I've spent countless search trying to get specific expect, uh, expect, uh, exceptionals. Any changes coming to the system? It is very difficult to get everything necessary on multiple characters. Also, bring back that squirt gun with headshots. Uh, you weren't around for the squirt gun, were you? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, yeah, this was pretty fun. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Also, no, it's overpowered. Uh, okay, oh. so... <laughs> Let's see, uh, implants. Yeah, so exceptionals, uh, we do definitely want to make available in Sanctuary for one reason, or one, uh... okay, so you're either gonna be able to purchase them outright uh, on a rotating like black market schedule. So like the, the inventory will, will be, uh, we'll have certain items in it one week or one rotation or whatever, and then, then switch out. Uh, or um, we're gonna make you do quests style stuff for them thank you it, for making this into an mmo yeah uh, it it depends we're like it's still up in the air but we do want you to be able to get those exceptionals in a more reliable way but our exchange is that uh we want your time right we want an investment from you uh that isn't monetary so awesome yeah thank you so much and i hope that answered your question epic dude if you want to come in and say uh thank you for basically uh your winners uh rapid go ahead and basically uh, show me the thumbs up from your end. You guys got your winners. And here comes a third winner. Unit 20, uh, unit 220. Uh, this may have uh, been asked since I had to drop out for a bit. Would it be possible to ever join more than one outfit on one character? That's interesting. Um, that's very interesting. I actually mentioned that. I think it's important. Yeah, yeah. I, I only became aware that that was even a thing uh, earlier this year. And I, I don't remember what game uh, was a part of it or had that the functionality, but... That is huge so, for plan aside. It will give you so much more activity. Interesting to to think about, right? Like being able Holy to bounce between them, or, or maybe like make like a main outfit and but yeah. still be able to do. I think that the idea battles. is that you can just collect yeah. you in your tag and switch between all of them, and then basically change the tag yourself personally. So you're invited, yeah. and that means the outfits will be more secure. About hey, you cannot pros, you cannot be in multiple outfits with our outfit. If we see you with another tag, we'll kick you out. It's like so much more uh, capacity. So that way you have an alliance system that you can actually join your other outfits that actually have the opportunity to talk amongst those communities. That's a huge idea. I mean, yeah, in yeah. my opinion. It's, no, it's, it's an interesting idea. More um, like, more like, more like, I think it would be better to do alliance where you can still hold your tag, but now you're alliance. So you can see their outfit tab, another person's outfit tab, another outfit percent. You can talk to all three of them uh, with the alliance, mm. alliance well, conversation. I I think the difference between alliances and, and what unit is suggesting is that uh, for for me, like personally, it, it would be di be different. Like basically, I'd be joining three different outfits because all of my friends are in those those three different outfits. Right. Uh, not necessarily an alliance. Alliance would be held at like the guild level, like mm. guilds aligned with other guilds. Makes so sense. like I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Like it's it's definitely an interesting idea. I kind of wonder how feasible it is. But, well done, uh, guys. We got two so answers think, yeah. and one pass. I just want to let you guys know. Rel only passed two times on Rapid. 
You can, you can. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're both on rapid. All right. <laughs> uh, you can pull oh, another non rapid question if you want. We, we rapid, we're going to give you another chance. He's passed twice <laughs> on you, the only one that literally got passed twice, and you just asked the funniest questions, man. Uh, if you guys want to basically, uh, I'll get, I'll give you a personal message over the rapid. Everybody, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Honestly, let's give it up to Rel. Can I get you guys a basically post? Oh, let me maybe change my voice for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we just saw the Rogue Planet lead developer, lead designer. Sorry for that other word. Where you just saw this man show up. Look at the uptime. He did so much for this stream. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Let's basically throw those emotes out, throw those emojis out, just show how much we just could love this man for showcasing it. The more I see, the more I know personally you want more from me. If you guys don't want to see this again from me, I know that emotes are not there. And that just tells me this was a bad stream. And I apologize, guys, uh, if I didn't basically leave, lead up to your expectations. So thanks, guys, for basically <laughs> showing up. And um, and everybody, I know you guys are looking at 24 months, 3 more Bandit. You guys are awesome. Thanks, guys, for basically posting those emails to show me personally that you guys actually had a good time. That's the only way I can actually see that because there's so much text going on. And um, emotes are just the fastest way for me to know that you guys had a good time. Thank you, guys. And uh, I hope you see you guys in Araxis. And I hope you guys sign up for more Outfit Spotlights. And if you guys don't know who I am, uh, my name, um, you can Google me on Archer TV on YouTube. And you can see some Outfit Spotlight highlights that we have been created. Ewog is the actual editor for those videos. I have zero editing knowledge. And I'm just focusing on all the social gatherings of every person's questions. And just sitting there, siphoning through millions of data and talking a lot and so that's where i'm an extrovert and he can actually help me with the editing side thank you so much uh not he i mean ewag over there um sorry about that <laughs> oh crap thank you Ralph. would you like to say anything basically too. to the whole community that has been here who has listened to what everything had to say do you want to basically end I, it on your note thank you i actually want to thank you uh for for having me and for facilitating all these yes you are oh, okay i was like <laughs> thank, <laughs> i was questions. like who are we thanking me or? no no yeah oh, yeah no man. it's Thanks, uh man. that's not something that um that like stuff like that goes underappreciated uh and i know how much work it is to kind of facilitate you know that sort of uh i, I guess administrative work it probably underplays its in, uh its importance but yeah. yeah no i mean i think you're doing a great job i think that the community here is really responsive to you and um and all of you guys are kind of a part of uh of what makes this game so great so so thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rel. Thank you, our, our RPG Rogue Planet Games for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I just want to give you guys one announcement. Justin Golenbach just sent me a DM says he's ready for his interview in the future. We will look forward to seeing the next Rogue Planet <laughs> interview. And we'll get him a chance to see our community manager for Rogue Planet Games. Everybody, have a great night. Go get something to eat because I'm starving. I think Rel and I just got skinnier while talking to you. And, uh... We will learn more about Rel's workout next time on Dragon, I mean, Planicide 2. <laughs> Take care, guys. Have a good one. Thank you so much. And have yeah. a good one if I can find that ending one. Here we go.